Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. The Bible tells us how that God made man and God gave him specific instructions. Genesis 1.28 was not an advice. It was not a suggestion. It was a command. Are we together? And when God gives a command, we are supposed to obey. It says, and God blessed them and said unto them, the first word, be fruitful he said unto them he didn't say there's an opportunity to be fruitful and i hope that you consider it it was a command be fruitful then he says multiply multiply reproduce yourself and your kind and then he says replenish the earth and subdue it he says and have sovereign control or dominion over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth so god made man and gave him adam an instruction and in that instruction he said be fruitful it was not an advice it was not a suggestion it was not his opinion for your consideration are we together now the same way he said ye must be born again that means ye must be fruitful be fruitful and then he says multiply the best description of this verse is found in isaiah 32 verse 15 be fruitful and multiply he says until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then he says the wilderness see the levels will be counted for a fruitful vine that's a fruitful vine and then the fruitful vine be counted for a forest that's not fruitfulness that's multiplication are we together so he says be fruitful meaning if you are not fruitful something is making you live in disobedience it's not about your benefit you are insulting the command of god be fruitful multiply replenish subdue have dominion and you see it is in the character of satan listen please it's in the character of satan to carefully hear what god has said because his assignment is to prove that the lordship of christ is a mirage and so his the, the his assignment begins only when god speaks satan cannot do anything if god has not spoken because his job is to make the word of god of non-effect so he listens carefully and he's patient isn't it interesting that even to destroy you it is activated at the coming of god's word if god has not said anything about you satan has nothing to do to you because his assignment is to oppose the word of god so i could imagine satan carefully paying attention to the speakings of god and when he told man be fruitful i can imagine satan telling the demons assignment number one barrenness 
multiply keep people in one place and so he goes around attempting to insult the integrity of God's word to the end that our conviction about God will be questioned and then ultimately we will lose trust and confidence in him be fruitful multiply be fruitful multiply be fruitful the concept of barrenness listen listen barrenness is not the absence of a child barrenness is the absence of results any kind of result any kind of results the inability to produce desired results children finances the level of influence the level of growth any any um, activity that is able to inhibit us from producing to capacity is called barrenness are we together now Jesus did not hide his opinion about barrenness when he saw the tree that had leaves and would not produce figs the Bible did not say let's give it time as it were in other parables he usually it was in his culture to be patient but not with barrenness are you hearing what I'm saying now it was in the character of Jesus to see an unfruitful tree and then say okay give it time maybe they didn't water it well but when he was aware it was barrenness he caused it immediately are we together now we do not serve the Lord for results however at a point in our Christian experience there must come a time when our lives will begin to relate with the possibilities that are in God this relationship that we call results prove two things number one the love and the goodness of God is important the goodness of God is a dimension of his glory that reveals his benevolence his ability to freely give there is such a dimension of God's glory called his goodness are we together and so barrenness is a very dangerous force do you know while I was studying uh, preparing for this miracle service I discovered generally speaking but specifically to barrenness now fruitfulness fruit of the womb do you know it is said that six out of every ten families six out of every ten families have one kind of of fruitfulness or fertility problem where was barrenness when our grandparents gave birth to 15 children without CS I'll tell you where it were those our parents were idol worshippers so there was nothing to attack so one woman gave birth to 15 children without twins one 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 under hot fire with knives and yet after 15 children she would stand strong but the moment you declare that you are signing to another government satan now came up with a system to stop the continuity of god's agenda listen let me tell you there is a bridge between us and the next prophetic speakings of God most of our parents and grandparents did not give their lives to Christ or did not walk in the fullness of the system of the kingdom we became the fruit of that carelessness somewhere along our journey to adulthood God intercepted prophetically and started leading us to understand the systems of God and already that that is a transgenerational threat to the gate of hell because the meaning of that is that a generation will come that does not know wickedness a generation will come that does not know father fighting mother a generation will come that does not know um, all these kinds of things there will be a generation that will corporately lift up the name of the Lord and Satan said no way so the first assignment is to stop your faith if it happens that you have passed that level then he now finds a system to keep you alone with your conviction till you die so that it will end the process are we together now hmm. 
Let me tell you something. Reproduction is a powerful thing. It's not about giving birth to children. It's about reproducing your values. It's about giving God more space. I hope you know that without a material body, God cannot find expression. And not everybody can host him. A body has thou prepared for me. So our generation is preparing bodies. And this is a threat to the gate of darkness. Barrenness is not about refusing to make you take in. No, it's not about impotency. No, barrenness is an agenda. It's an agenda to stop any platform that can create continuity of people raised after the image of their fathers and mothers who are themselves after the image of God. Our dispensation was the first to reveal the possibility of reproduction through birth. Every other dispensation before our church age had creation, not reproduction. Are we together now? And so God will create. The celestial beings were created. Now when God created Adam, I hope you know that Satan was once in heaven. He had never seen the possibility of reproduction through birth. That a man and a woman can come through a system of reproduction and give birth to another human being. It was not part of his understanding. So when Adam and Eve fell, he knew that there was no possibility again and then to his surprise he saw Eve pregnant now this was strange he didn't even know the name of what it was what causing this woman's stomach to protrude after nine months here comes another person and Satan knew that this is a strategy that means whatever is in a man can be reproduced through many children that means a woman can actually hold a child i told you women are gates in the spirit women are gates in the spirit that's why demons oppress them it's not gender the only gates that can authorize another life to be made flesh so barrenness is an agenda marriage is just the focal point of that warfare but that's not the only place are we together there is nothing that gives satan joy as watching the frustration that comes in the life of a believer as a result of repeated frustration and stagnation the human spirit was designed to be motivated on the strength of progress everything that is alive grows everything that is alive moves lack of growth and progress is a symbol of death are we together now so it appears in different forms a lady will keep herself and serve God. A man will keep himself and serve God, sweating in the house of God and get married. And all of a sudden, hilarious medical reports begin to evolve themselves. Fibroid. They say the man is impotent. Are we together now? And then it continues like that. Um, my assignment tonight is to get you very angry with anything that looks like barrenness in your life. You've heard the testimonies. It should go. It can go if you insist. Hallelujah. Mm, barrenness. It's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing to live a barren life. Look around our society and you see barrenness speaking everywhere. A man begins to build a house and for 10 years it has not gotten to Linter level. Until he dies, he leaves it there. It's called barrenness. It's called barrenness. Let me tell you something. When you buy your first car at age 50, it's not a testimony. Are we together now? When certain things, do you know certain things in life have a time period? when their coming will be relevant to your living there are it's not just that they should arrive they must arrive on time so that they can be used for the purpose for which they came hmm. are we together now barrenness there's some fruitfulness everywhere there are people's lives it's even consoling if one aspect of your life is working 
and then another aspect is not working at least he will give you the impetus to face it but there are people seated here nothing is working completely when i say nothing your health is not working your life is not working your brain is not working your body is not working your emotions are not working nothing is working it's called barrenness it's an agenda if you see it as an issue you will not address it enough when you see it as an agenda a plot you will destroy it with every sense of seriousness don't just look at it as an issue that is just embarrassing me that's too small a motivation to fight it look at it as an agenda that seeks to be transgenerational and then you attack it whether you have a child or not this is not for people who do not have children you know we have this ugly religious mindset of saying at least i have uh, my first um sets of children twins i have another twins what am i looking for that's even a sign that your brain is barren you may not be barren in terms of physical barrenness but it's all working well the Bible says, and Abraham was old and well stricken in age. He said, and the Lord had blessed him in all things. Second Kings chapter 5 says, Naaman, there was a man called Naaman. He said he was the captain of the Syrian army. And the Bible says he was a man who was valiant. For was, he was leprous. When I was preparing for this meeting, I took a clean sheet of paper to write out everything that was working in my life and everything that was not working. And I presented it to God. I said, Lord, we are flogging it out this night. Don't sit down fooling yourself, just focusing on the things that are working. Thank God for them. But do not say because five things are working, let me let the other two. You must force those two to work. Hmm. Say amen. Amen. Let me give you a few scriptures specifically for those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I don't know how you will motivate yourself tonight, but believe God, believe God, believe God. Deuteronomy 7 verse 14. Please help us media. Let's be very fast. There's a lot to do tonight. Deuteronomy 7 verse 14. Deuteronomy 7 verse 14. I want you to read it, please. If you're a child of God, read it loud. One to read. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. Uh huh. There shall not be male or female barren among you or your what? The only people obeying this scripture are animals. The only sets of people obeying this scripture are animals. They don't pray, they don't fast, they give birth anyhow, anywhere, under any condition any condition it says thou shalt be blessed above all people there shall not be male or female men can be barren women can be barren pastors can be barren parents can be barren families can be barren territories and nations can be barren hallelujah are we together now? And then it says, there shall not be male or female barren among you. That means if you are experiencing any form of barrenness, it cannot be God. I'm giving you reason to attack these things as from the devil. Do not create any theology under any circumstance to justify barrenness of any sort. Don't be embarrassed by it, but summon the courage tonight to call it what it is and face it squarely. Psalm 127, verse 3 to 5. Psalm 127, verse 3 to 5. Psalm 127, please. Verse 3 to 5, very quickly. It says, Lo, read it, please. Children are what? Um, this scripture. Is a very powerful scripture. He never said children come from men. The seed that gives them bodies come from men. But children are a heritage from 
the Lord. Read on please. We are not done media. It says as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man. So are the children that are giving birth to early. So are the children that are giving birth to early. You are, it's not just the children of your youth. There is something about youthfulness and giving birth. Even biologically, without any sense of insult, but even biologically, we understand that when a woman has stayed so long and is about to give, to, to give birth, there, there are certain kinds of sicknesses and imperfections and deformities that may likely happen. Like Down syndrome and so on and so forth. The Bible talks about the children of your youth. Verse 5. Happy is the man whose quiver is what? I don't know about you, but I don't believe in having only one child. Because two is at least the number of witness. And there are certain things that only happen when two or three. Ah, come on now. I'm preaching to somebody. Go ahead, respect your ideology. But the more you know God, the more you become a believer. Hallelujah. Happy, he didn't say sad. Children can make men happy. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. I have met wealthy people who the only thing they pray for is a child. Are we together? They will pay any amount. They will go any length. They just need a child. Not prosperity, not a job. Happy is the man that his quiver is full of them. He says they shall not be. Society has an ugly way of stigmatizing people. In every area of barrenness, but especially on fruitfulness. Especially in Nigeria. The average time they give you is two weeks. Once you are married, people are, uh, it's ladies that first start. They look at the signs, they look at your face. The men don't know, they don't care. To, they will catch up later after four or five months. I mean, but the women, they're already looking. And then after two months, someone will confront you and say jokes. Ah, when is Junior coming? Now, you think it's a joke. After a few months, they won't laugh about it when they are saying it again. We live in a society, especially Africa. After nine months, if you cannot give birth to a child, your persecution starts immediately. Are we together? And then I'm still surprised that with the age of knowledge and intelligence, we still have all kinds of people, you know, driven by culture and all of these cultural ideologies. Oh, I married a witch. That's the reason why I'm not giving birth and all of that and so on and so forth. If the man, your seed is required for the woman and she's a witch. What are you? For it not working. You see that? We victimize women shamefully. And then we think, oh, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. This is a stupid woman that I got married to. No, no. Listen, listen. Barrenness is an entirely spiritual thing. Forget about the medical report you came with. I am telling you the origin of barrenness. The, see, barrenness, fibroid, and all kinds of demonic operations, they are related. It's the same system that brought them. Listen to me. Fibroid is an attempt to mimic a child between you and a spirit. Fibroid is not just an object growing. Is growing at a pace that is not consistent with your normal body growth. Meaning another life is sponsoring it. Are we together now? Yeah. So you have a woman get pregnant. She's rejoicing. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The moment the doctor announces. She goes to bed in the night. And all kinds of strangers. Depending on what episode. A man, a woman. All kinds of people come and the next thing the woman has lost the pregnancy. And while people are insulting her because we live in a society that, that who, whose conscience has been so numbed, we can insult people without finding what is going on. The cure for barrenness is not counseling. Counseling does not drive out demons. 
Fibroid is real. You can feel it. It can destroy you. Impotency is real. Whether you believe it or not. And do you know, this affects Christians more because we are guided by certain principles until marriage. So there's no room to ordinarily find out what is wrong with you. You just marry and get the shock immediately. That, that quest for obedience prepared the healthy environment for Satan to manifest it. But the devil is a liar tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. I once prayed for a woman who said she would be sitting down. God is my witness. And physically, pastor, physically, physically, feel a man come to her as though sleeping with her. I'm, I don't mean in a, in a vision. Wide awake, any time of the day, that stranger just comes. Claiming legal rights and holds over God's people and stopping them for years. Let me tell you another thing with barrenness. It does not live by itself. Any kind of barrenness. One day, my miracle will come. It's not a wise approach. Not with barrenness. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. You've got to get up and say today. Today is the day. One day, is, it, it looks like a consolation, but you never receive results from it. One day I know I will build that house. One day I know, Abba, is it not turn by turn? There are all kinds of wise sayings. Life is turn by turn. Are you joking? There are some people who died, their turn never came. You force your turn. Brothers and sisters, this thing is by force. You force your turn. You force your turn. Time and chance happens to all. He didn't say they receive it. It just says, in God's equation, he made provision for everyone to have it. As I'm speaking to you, I'm very angry in my spirit. Because some things must change this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. I know families who have spent millions, literally, looking for the fruit of the womb. I know families who have been depressed. At all kinds of things. Do you know the one that pains me more? When a pastor becomes barren. That, 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 one, that one gets to me. It's, it's personal. You know why? Because Satan is like putting a billboard on the man's life. I am at work. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's very painful. It's very painful. I've had the privilege of meeting men of God in different places. And they are one prayer. They come to me in the secret and they cry. They say, man of God, I lay my hands on others. They come back with twins. They come back with this. But I've not been able to have a child. And we have members whose mouths don't keep quiet. We run our mouths around with different episodes of what we think might be the explanation. Supporting the barrenness. Rather than taking it personal. And go to God and say, no Lord, something must be done. Do you know what Abraham would have gone through? 25 years. Barrenness. Hallelujah. How about other aspects of barrenness? The inability for you to produce results in ministry. To the point that you are now doubting whether you are called or not. Are we together now? You used to shout before and say, I know God called me. But after two years with seven members alone. You're already keeping quiet now and say the most important thing is I'm obeying. You, you see, let me tell you, lack of result makes you to hide certain convictions. You will be forced to hide them. That's how Satan stops people. He doesn't shut your mouth. He stops the area of results. But we are going to pray. Listen, tonight I don't want you to feel embarrassed about confronting anything that is barrenness in your life. Are we together now? We are a family of faith and we are going to cry before the God of heaven and say, Lord, open strange doors. Open strange doors. Open a door that no man can shut. Hallelujah. There are pastors who are supposed to be at a level. They, they are doing everything scripturally. That should bring the kind of results they want. And yet nothing is working. 
absolutely nothing is working no ministry people come receive miracles and go all kinds of things happen one day my result will come is a deception from hell i'm telling you this again you must insist and say i make that one day today Psalm 113 verse 9. Psalm 113 verse 9. Please help us media. Psalm 113 verse 9. This is what will be somebody's story after this miracle service. It says he make it. Who makes it? Ah. And we're standing here only because you made he make it so god can make it happen it is within his power to make it happen he make it the barren woman to keep house and then he says to be a joyful mother of what the only reason why you should stop giving birth is mutual understanding between you and your wife not a situation that has pegged you and saying that child will not come no A joyful mother. A joyful mother of children. A joyful mother of children. One last scripture. Exodus 23 verse 26. Exodus 23. I'd like you to read it. One to read. There shall nothing cast her young. Nor be buried in thy land. He didn't say there shall no one. He said nothing. Nothing. Do you know your money can be barren? Many other things in your life can be barren. He says there shall nothing cast their young. Nor be barren in the land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Brothers and sisters, it's time to get angry. To know that every trace of barrenness, regardless of how it appears, is of the devil and must be dealt with as such three keys to fruitfulness very quickly when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way and we're standing here only because you made you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your power you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because you three keys very quickly to fruitfulness the first key is to treat fruitfulness as a command have an understanding that fruitfulness is not an opinion it's not an opinion that is left to your personal desire fruitfulness is a command fruitfulness is a command genesis 1 28 fruitfulness is a command anything that is not fruitful in your life is causing your life to be disobedient towards the word of god anything anything the moment you see your life not producing result in any aspect there is a spirit forcing your life to reflect obedience disobedience fruitfulness is a command barrenness is an attempt to make you violate that command number two the second key to fruitfulness is that obedience to kingdom principles will deliver the desired result it's not enough to have the understanding that is a command there are principles that compel your partnership with the word of god in order to get that result principles scattered through scripture are several principles that are responsible for certain manifestations of God's grace in our lives. 
Are we together? Praise God. Are we together now? Sorry about that. Obedience to kingdom principles will deliver desired result. Listen, please. Wishing and crying helps you, but it does not help your situation. Are we together now? God is moved by your tears, but he only responds to his word. He's moved by your tears. We do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. It's called compassion. But for results to happen in your life, you must activate the word. The woman with the issue of blood had been crying, but nothing happened. But she said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. Obedience to kingdom principles. For instance, when it comes to finances, your tithe, your giving, kingdom investments and the opportunity and the platform to provide value remain the irrefutable keys to wealth and abundance there is no theology around it are we together there is no magic and mysticism around it obedience to kingdom principles now most of us want miracles of fruitfulness listen we want miracles of fruitfulness in our lives. But we are unwilling to pay that price of alignment. There are people who are not consistent tithers. They have an idea that tithing is, um, is a system. Men of God just corner the money and they enjoy it. I mean, that, that, that is such a deception. See how cheap you gave yourself to Satan. How much is what you are bringing? For you to believe that is the reason why a man will compromise on his faith. There are all kinds of theological ideas sponsored by the gate of hell that keep people poor. Are we together? How about trusting and believing God to make you whole? Do you know there are people who do not believe? Listen, listen. There are people who do not believe in some of these testimonies you hear in the church. Maybe not in Koinonia, but in the body of Christ. When they hear something like fibroid disappear, they just look and say, oh, we agree. They don't lie. Let's clap. You see, we, we mock ourselves because we have so fraternized with unbelief. It has become our template. You never refuse to agree that the person was not born with the growth. It came from nowhere. You believe that one. That it went back to where it came from. You don't believe it. Are we together? Oh, someone's genotype changed. Or a woman gave birth to triplets and twins. Some of you, where is the woman? Let her come. Let's see. I must see with my own eyes. You see, let me tell you something. Do not over-intellectualize spiritual things. They are far beyond the realm of the intellect. If you learn to believe God with childlike faith and say, Lord, I know this is true. When will you believe? Are we together? Honestly, there are some of us we have never really believed anything truly. You have only been aware that it happened. But that conviction, no. I'm a believer. Oh, I believe God. I believe God. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Especially for those of us, listen, especially for those of us who, who claim to be a light, we have allowed education to take the place of God. And then we want God to give you a science on how these things will happen. Are we together now? God, you need to show me how this will be this and produce this. And then God says, me? give you that explanation the bible says for us you do not know the way of the wind nor how bones are formed in her that has a child how a seed a little seed from a man becomes the bones of a child that you cannot break with your hand explain that mystery says so you do not know the way of god tonight i want you to believe don't sit down asking will this genotype really change will i really be delivered Will God bless me just like that? I remember one time P 
people were joining the queue i think some months ago just to see me after service and then um a particular i think it was a lady or so just met me and she was ranting all her problems what she felt you know she felt look i need special time and i just touched her. i said it's done she said no no you don't understand i'm trying to explain. i said it's done what are all these long stories you are it's done i touched you i said it's done now i know what her problem will be even if his pain is not on her head you just touch me and say it's done that's how it works it works at the speed of faith The woman with the issue of blood did not touch the hands of Jesus. She touched the hem. Frankly, any part she touched would have produced the same result. It was never about what she touched. Are we together now? We have seen all kinds of testimonies just with one word. Just with one supernatural word. My neighbor then, I think she's somewhere here. She shared her testimony here. You've heard the testimony of the miracle that God did. Supernatural miracle. All kinds of devilish things. And they said all kinds of things were, you know, growing and all of that in her stomach. It came out. It passed out like a woman gives birth to a child. That's how it came. Oh, come on. See, this God, eh? Miracle worker. You are the miracle worker. Would you come and do a miracle? A miracle today. Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. One of the strategies of Satan in this season is to plant nonsense in the bodies of ladies. Very healthy lady, eating well. The moment she's about to marry, they will tell you something is wrong. Ovarian cyst fibroid somewhere or they'll say the womb has disappeared are we together fashions of stories sincerely communicated by well-meaning doctors but that's a manipulation somewhere are we together now to an extent some of you ladies now are looking at me you are even afraid you are not even sure you see all kinds of people, even if you are prophesying about finances, they are laying hands on their womb and say, Lord, my own is not money. Just make sure that I give birth. When has a good thing become a thing of fear? Are we together now? And then the, the one that surprises me is the concept of impotency. Where they say a man, no, 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 no. That concept is a mirage plus plus. You better disbelieve it. Gentlemen, listen. Gentlemen, listen to me. Don't ever, don't ever, I say it again, allow anything to convince you that there is such a possibility like that. It is, it is, it is an advanced form of witchcraft in the life of any man. Are we together now? Don't think I'm just talking. I know what I'm saying. What you tolerate, you will never change. What you give flimsy excuses for you, it will never leave you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want you to challenge yourself and tell yourself, I must have testimonies. Fruitfulness is a command. Number two, obedience to the principles of the kingdom is required to deliver your desired result the last point i'll give us and then we'll pray is that in many cases warfare slash deliverance may be required to receive your testimony now you better believe this in many cases obadiah 117 in many cases warfare slash deliverance may be required to receive your testimony that's not because you are a witch that's not because you are a wizard away with that imbalanced communication to think that the moment devils are casted out of lives and people it means that they are possessed no not at all not at all not at all and away with that wrong understanding a believer cannot be possessed but a believer can be greatly influenced your faculties can come under siege siege that will look like you are possessed of devils make sure that the construction of your belief 
is based on the word of God. So that you don't shortchange yourself of certain possibilities. Look at me. There are many of us here seated looking at me. There are spirits sitting comfortably upon our lives and destinies. Every time things are not going well in your life. And you do the best you can to keep certain kingdom principles. Then I want you to know that you are not alone in that system. There is a stranger attempting to add to the equation something you did not add. If you keep quiet, that's how your life will go. Warfare, deliverance, contending with the powers that be. Satan will not let you go just because God said to. It takes force. A popular scripture that has become our anthem in this place psalm 66 verse 3 how terrible art thou in your ways he said through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves not through the greatness of your discussion it takes power don't see listen you are you are coming from a family with transgenerational witchcraft i know you are in christ but listen satan does not care all that grammar is none of his business it, you have to prove you are in christ by taking advantage of the power that came through christ to put him where he belongs he says satan he said god had put all things under his feet speaking of man he said but as it is now we do not yet see all things under his feet faith is not foolishness you must summon the courage to confront things that have refused to go oh in the name of jesus christ i'm born again up this and that and that but you are seeing all of you you are seeing patterns that reflect a healthy living of wicked spirits jesus did not hide the fact that we are influenced perpetually by all kinds of spirits in our world who attempt to compromise on our testimony it was god's servant bishop oyedeko that shared how that when the ministry started great ministry now touching people across africa and the world but then when they started people would not just come pastor for whatever reason a very anointed man signs and wonders epochal revelations but people would not come and one time they were praying engaging in warfare intense warfare in the place of prayer and the holy spirit asked him to come out and he came out and then after he had moved a distance the holy spirit told him turn and face you know look at the building and all of that and then he saw a thick layer covering it and this was what the lord told him he said this is the stronghold that makes people to misrepresent your ministry everything you do they see it in a bad light and he commanded it to go and it left and all of a sudden there was there was explosion kenneth e hagin teaching on his encounter with jesus his book about his encounter with jesus he gave a very dramatic scenario that happened between him and jesus he said at a point when the lord jesus christ appeared to him jesus was talking to him and was giving him some instructions all of a sudden a devil like an imp a short devil just appeared in between them and was jumping up and down you know distracting kenneth hagin kenneth hagin said he thought jesus christ being there would stop that spirit from coming yet the spirit was there jumping up and down and jesus kept talking he seemed unaffected by whatever the demon was doing but kenneth hagin was affected and jesus kept speaking kenneth hagin said it worried him for a long time until he got angry in his spirit and the holy spirit gave him a strategy and he commanded that spirit he said in the name of jesus i rebuke you and he felt and, and left and this was what jesus told him according to kenneth hagin he said if you did not do anything about it i would not have done anything all that it is to be done i have done how can Shiria is nonsense the day you get up you the best way to predict your future is to create it create it create it don't sit down waiting for it to come create it listen i don't believe in circumstances i create any circumstance i want i create it the bible tells us that the word is framed 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 your world your environment your reality is framed by the word of god obadiah 117 it says 
and upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness. Then it says the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Standing between the sons of Jacob and their possessions are gates, forces, fraternities, covenants of darkness that attempt to sabotage the liberty of God's people. And then it says that there shall be deliverance. Deliverance is not falling down necessarily. It's not just manifesting and coughing out things. No. The context of deliverance is a platform that creates a separation on a legal basis between you and any force that keeps you bound. Are we together? There are things that have held our lives, brothers and sisters, and it must let us go. You must believe this. Don't sit down. I'm, I'm telling you this thing so you don't sit down and waste your time. I came with my spirit angry. We are going to deal with the issue of the fruit of the womb extensively. But then I want you to know the reason why the door has not opened is because there is a spirit sitting somewhere. And I tell you, if you let those spirits, they will wreck your life. Wreck your life. There are pastors whose churches have refused to grow. And they think they preach well. They are anointed people. They are great people. But they are all kinds of forces. Brothers and sisters, wickedness is real. The Bible tells you the whole world lies in wickedness. Don't say I didn't do anything to anybody. The condition to be vulnerable to oppression is that you are born. Once you arrive here, that's all. You, you are in the middle of a story that predates your existence. So as you come, you just join in the whole thing. Don't you think you have to come up with a fresh trouble? No, it is there before you arrived. Have you not seen children hated for something their parents did before they got married? And they look at you and while they are insulting the man, they say, who is this? You say, my name is David. Who's, you are his child? You are the idiot like him? You just inherited an insult. Just because you were associated with a man while they were making that trouble, you were in the loins of eternity. And now you came and participated. Tonight, I want you to believe God. I want you to believe God. Brothers and sisters, there's enough grace and unction for you to receive the miracle. I believe in breakthrough. Breakthrough is a mystery that gives men speed. Where limits are taken. Kabbalataya. Limits are taken. Limits are taken. Limits are taken. Limits are taken. I don't know what has held you down. You must break this limit. Don't sit carelessly looking. Some of you have some results. We all have different results, but is that the best? God can fast track your life. That between now and December 31st, he will put a new song in your mouth. A song of praise in your heart. He said many will see and fear and put their trust in him. Hallelujah. And time will fail me to speak of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought the mouth of of lions shut the mouth of lions wrought righteousness let's look at one scripture romans 4 18. i just want to touch a little on this issue of believing and faith we just finished a series on faith please i encourage everyone as god grants you grace make sure you get those series and listen to them but I just want to challenge our faith a little, even as we prepare to pray. There's such a strong anointing in this place tonight. Jesus. Hallelujah. Such a strong anointing. I'm hearing footsteps. That's what I'm hearing in my spirit. Footsteps. And the Holy Spirit is telling me he's the one walking to people's lives. I'm hearing footsteps. No, 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 no. I, I believe me. Just, just, just believe me. Just walk with me. I'm hearing footsteps right now. God will not let me continue. He's walking to someone's life right now. Right now. I'm hearing footsteps in the spirit. I'm still hearing footsteps. And the Holy Spirit is telling me this is his footsteps. He's walking to someone's life. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. I don't know where those people are. But right now their stories must change. Must change. 
God is not even waiting for me to finish preaching. Something is happening here. Shabarato Kasubaya. A change of story. Something must change. Something must change. Something must change. Something must change. Something is happening right now. Zarato Kaparata Katatata. Leketekete. How forcible are right words. Sekatalatos. Empre toketele kata. Siketere to supatalalaya. De katash kabarita da badabadabana. Secreto si badadabadabana. Brante katala koto supata. Footsteps. I still hear these footsteps. I still hear these footsteps in my ears. And God is saying He's giving people testimonies. It's like the Spirit of God walking. Walking. He will meet you where you are. He will meet you where you are. Shabala rabala rabala. Sit down. Sit down. Let's finish up. Romans 4 verse 18. Just sit down. The waters has been stirred. I just want to give you an understanding on faith. You have a role to play. Listen please. You have a role. Don't worry about what is happening. You have a role to play. Please hear me. You have a role to play. You have a role to play. You're not going to sit down and just expect to be healed. You have a role to be to play. Lift your hands, gentlemen. You raising your hand. I see an angel pouring oil on your head. That's what I'm seeing right now. Something looking like oil. That's what I see. I don't even know you. But in the name of Jesus Christ, receive that anointing right now. My spirit is fired up. I feel this thing on me now. I feel this thing on me now. I feel this anointing on me now. I feel this thing on me now. Shake a tire, It's the anointing that comes with the office. I feel it on me right now. Zeketo sheta reto kasoda brita shia daba lembre to sata brashi kete brata kata barata badaba lebra to shia. A lady with a breast lump, a lady with a breast lump has just been healed right now. Check yourself, check yourself. A lady with a breast lump, the left side of your breast, the left side of your breast, the left side of your breast, the left side of your breast. The power of God is touching you right now. The power of God is touching you right now. The power of God is touching you right now. The power of God is touching you right now. The Bible says, Who against hope? Against hope, I've taught us. Against hope means in spite of the obstacles believed. Who against hope? I told you the starting point of faith is the presence of an obstacle. It is not unusual to see obstacles. There is a system to take care of them. That system is based on your conviction. Backed up by understanding that compels you to take action. The name of that action is faith. Not the name of the believing. Believing is not faith. Believing is restful confidence based on an understanding. The end product of believing is conviction. When you act it, the name given to that action is faith. Listen, you can hear the most anointed word if you do not mix it with faith. Be convicted that this is the word of God and then be ready to take steps. So if you are here and you cannot stand, be ready to stand. Don't just sit down saying, well, let's see what will happen. You will go back home on that wheelchair. You are deaf, you are blind, whatever it is genotype whatever make sure you are anchoring your spirit a door has refused to open make sure that you receive there are many faith actions praise and celebrating god is an action that's how you water whatever you sow listen jesus said and i've corrected it here i've taught us he said if you have faith 
as a monster seed. I've told you it's not the size. If you have faith and your faith works like a monster seed, a monster seed is sown. That means if you can plant your faith and create an environment for it to grow in the similitude of a monster seed, then you can say to this mountain, it was not talking about the size of faith. If you have faith and you have understood how to make it operate like a monster seed, then you will do great things. Are we together? Tonight, I want you to refuse that any force of darkness holding your destiny will go back with you. I want you to refuse. Listen, listen. There is grace for increase. I feel it in this place. I, I just want you to believe me. You know, sometimes it's difficult communicating things to people because some, we live in an environment of such unbelief. I know the grace for increase. Listen, increase is an unction. Honor is a mantle. It can come upon a man. You can carry it bodily. Don't sit down and just waste your time. You may not be sick in your body, but there is an encounter that produces a possibility upon your life. Listen, I told you creation has never been disobedient. Something on you or not on you is what compels the response of creation. An anointing is like a mantle. It works like a charm. When it is upon your life, that anointing speaks is a language it will make creation respond to you in a certain way that's what you call favor that's what you call breakthrough don't sit down asking can i get a job that's a very foolish question very foolish question don't sit down asking can god make a way in the wilderness my god my god my god ah Don't sit down asking, can I get the child? No. What you should be asking is, can I get the twins or triplets? Not, can I get the child? Are we together? You are here tonight because you are trusting God to do something in your life. Face the business that brought you and be serious. Don't sit down laughing at others, criticizing others. Others will be taking radical steps of faith. Don't sit down there being cynical, laughing at them. No. Connect and open up your spirit. Man of God, open up for your ministry. There can be more. There can be more. There can be more. The pressure of ministry will kill you if you continue going the way you are going. There is a system that bails you out. Even favor, let me tell you, this favor that we think is very free, there are laws. There is an unction that brings favor. It is a manifestation of favor that is effortless. But there is a system, an exact system, a science to its coming into your life. Hallelujah. Don't sit here and allow the over 40,000 or so people following online who are receiving and getting blessed and their lives are changing and you are here seated and you are wondering, can God change me? Are you not seeing? Don't you see his signature all over? Listen. There are three platforms for us to receive in the kingdom. I'm rounding up now. There are three platforms for reception. I've taught this, but let me just touch it quickly. The first platform for reception is an encounter with the presence of God. When you meet God, the presence of God alone, listen, will leave certain deposits. It's like an intercourse between a man and his wife. There is a transfer. So when you meet God, there is a deposit. Listen, the second platform for reception is through your understanding and your application of the principles of the kingdom. There are dimensions of the power of God that has been vested in laws. You don't have to pray. The moment the laws are accurately um, operated, the power is released immediately. You don't have to be a Christian. But the third dimension, listen, the third dimension of reception is by tapping into the covenant a man has with God. Listen. Men enter covenants with God that represents platforms for certain possibilities to find expression. Either through their personal press or through the office they represent and the possibilities it brings. Listen to me.
You will never touch prosperity ignoring Abraham. Abraham entered a covenant with God that became the platform to see that dimension of God work in your life. There are men today who have covenants with God. Answers to prayer is not just by their personal faith. Their altar is a mystery and others can tap into that mystery through honor and receive results that are above and beyond your current level of believing God. When, when Saul came where Samuel was, just that atmosphere implicated him. He prophesied. All kinds of things happened to him. You need to understand that territories, human beings represent systems in the kingdom. And not there are certain audacious statements that when God makes, he's not just waiting for your personal faith. He creates the platform for receiving those miracles upon a covenant. Are we together now? God entered a covenant with Abraham. Is that true? And then Abraham slept with Hagar and then had Ishmael. Is that true? They were at the wilderness crying. Two of them were crying. God only had the cry of Ishmael. Why? Because Ishmael was Abraham as far as the covenant was concerned. So God could not listen to Hagar, but he had the voice of the Lord crying. And because of that, he came. Let me tell you, this ministry you see, like cobwebs, is an encapsulation of mysteries and covenants. Mysteries and covenants. Agreements with God that become the platform for certain possibilities to happen. I want you to leverage on those advantages and cheaply tap into certain things tonight. You are not alone. There is grace for you. Rise up on your feet. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are mighty. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Say na 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 na. You are mighty in this place. Faithful God. Hallelujah. 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 Faithful God. Hallelujah. minute before we begin to minister I want you to lift your voice and tell God everything you desire for him to do don't keep quiet don't say God knows open your mouth Lord step into my finances Lord step into my business Lord step into my family faithful God hallelujah Se que para da bato sobra de la lava Lord take away the barrier that is stopping my doors from opening Take away the barrier oh God stopping my influence enlarge my coast ta pa ta ya ba Se que tele catara ba 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 Answers prayers. Katatola to seta. 
Lord, I must take my testimony tonight. I'm tired of this fibroid. It dies this night. This night. It must go this night. Not tomorrow. Lord, favor must land upon my life. I'm tired of struggling. Favor must come upon my life. Those online, make sure you are praying. The anointing of the Spirit will reach you where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. Don't bring them out. I am seeing the Lord speaking to me. And he's saying there is an unction for divine strategies. And it's coming on 21 people. 21 people. I stretch my hands right now. I stretch my hands right now. Receive that impartation. 21 people. Divine strategies. The wisdom of God. Receive it. That idea, Kato Sotoya, divine idea. Someone has been praying, Lord, show me the way. Here it comes. The anointing brings it. Help them, please. The anointing brings it upon your life. 21 people. The Lord shows me. 21 people. An impartation. Supernatural strategies. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to begin to minister now. But the Lord, the Lord is speaking to me. Listen. Listen, the Lord is speaking to me, and this is a mystery. 
God wants to use two people for a prophetic word. Two people. Listen. Two people for a prophetic word. Two people. Play mic. Something supernatural is happening. Ah. The Lord is taking me in the spirit. And I'm seeing a map. Get ready please. I'm seeing a map in the spirit of Nigeria. And I'm landing in Kaduna state. I see an anointing touching Kaduna people now. Right now, right now, right now. By the spirit of God. Kaduna state. Kaduna state. I see an anointing. Only Kaduna state. Shabarapakata. Embreketeta. Kaduna state. A miracle happening for Kaduna people. Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. God is bringing breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough. Hallelujah. I don't know why God does this. Brothers and sisters, don't ask me. Don't ask me. This is an operation. It's called the Ministry of Signs and Wonders. Now I see Benway State. Benway State. I see an anointing on Benway State. Now, an anointing on Benway State. Benway State. Shaka Toda Parata. Reketekete, help them please. Benway State. You can't stand it. You don't have to know whether you don't know your state. Benway State. Miracles. Miracles. Go into Benway State. I hear or to go in the spirit. A miracle happening right there. Right there. All those connected to that bloodline. There is a miracle for you right now. Don't trivialize what is happening here, brothers and sisters. These are territorial breakthroughs. Territorial breakthroughs. Hallelujah. 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 I'll pray for Stephanie. 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 I'm hearing a name, Stephanie. Please, let's save time. Who is Stephanie? Yeah, like a red dress or something like that. Stephanie, who is that? Stephanie. There is a Stephanie I'm seeing. I will pray for you, but I'm seeing someone and in the vision the Lord is showing me it's like a red dress, but I'll pray for you. Lift your hands. The Lord says I should tell you witchcraft ends in your family. Witchcraft ends in your family. You will hear testimonies that will surprise you. Right now I stretch my hands towards you. Now, it ends by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Johanna. 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 I'm hearing a name, Johanna. Please save our time. Johanna. I don't know who that person is. Johanna. I won't continue speaking like this because we have to be fast. Johanna. 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 Whether you're here inside or outside, Johanna, 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 there is a lady following us from Lagos. Your name is Blessing. Your name is Blessing. You are in a room. You are following from a laptop. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, He's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. He's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I want to pray. I tell you, I feel fire in this place. It's time to command deliverance. It's time to command deliverance upon the forces of darkness that have tied our lives. Forces of darkness. The Lord is bringing deliverance to your family. Your family. The Lord is bringing deliverance. I'm seeing a plot of witchcraft over his family and the Lord is bringing deliverance right now right now to the family right now to the family the Lord is bringing a major deliverance to the family a major deliverance to the family 
Alléluia. Listen. Listen. As I begin to pray for you, all those devils that has tied the lives of people, it doesn't mean you are possessed. It's not an insult. You may not even know. You may be minding yourself just like you're standing now. I'm going to command those devils, they must go. They are not only going to live your life, they must live your family. Are we together? Listen, some of you brought many prayer lists. Just one spirit living will produce all that testimony. Believe me. Believe me. Lift your hands. My heart, my soul, I give to you. I bow to you, my Savior and King. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for your anointing to deliver, to set free. There are spirits in this place sitting on the lives and the destinies of people. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they must go. I want you to bring them out now. They must go. They must go now. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. You'll be surprised to see what happens. Kai, 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 Kai. I see spirits of delay. 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 Spirits that have held men down. All kinds of spirits. Father, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, Lord, as your people shout, may this shout reverberate in the realm of the spirit and may it bring breakthrough 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 flowing sound my flowing sound in the name of Jesus one two three shout Jesus now I command those demons go now go now go now Kato Sotoba lift your voice and begin to command every spirit every devil help them please go now I command every spirit of witchcraft that has tied the lives and the destinies of people. You must go now, inside and outside. I command you, inside and outside. Bring them out. I command you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lift your voice. I command you. You must go now. Now, by the anointing of the Spirit. Their destinies, release their destinies, release their breakthrough. Lift your hands while you pray. Atasileka prosudo pariata kotusha. Prende kabrato soko tu baleyakata. I'm seeing gates and I'm seeing chains on them, and the Lord is saying to unlock those chains, unlock those chains. That anointing will come on certain people right now. Father, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, wherever they are, any place in your life that has been chained and tied right now in Jesus' name, I command those gates be open, be open, be open, be open, be open by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Chains, chains, be broken. Ushers, please. Chains, be broken. In the name of Jesus. Chains, be broken. Be broken. Kalapatoshaya. Release their destinies outside. The Holy Ghost is touching people outside. I see a wind of fire touching people by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Every enchantment, every enchantment, every witchcraft against the lives of people, against destinies, you must go now. Mr. Man, lift your hands. This man, lift your hands. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that your breakthrough begins this night. Right now, receive that anointing. Receive that anointing right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring them out. I'm hearing the name Charity. Charity. We have to be very fast. Because I want to focus on barren people right now. Charity. 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 I'm hearing the name Charity. 
charity the lord wants to bring breakthrough for charity the second overflow there are two people god is touching there the second overflow i see the anointing coming on two people the overflow the roadside in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now listen something is going to happen here now ushers i want you to be sensitive i'm going to pray for certain people you will have to help them the grace for speed listen is going to come on some people physically they will find themselves trying to run help them so that it's not like they won't be able to control themselves it's a prophetic act by the spirit so that they don't enjoy anybody lord in the name of jesus guys be sensitive please in the name help them please it's already happening that's the instruction god is giving me an anointing will come on you physically you will begin to demonstrate your breakthrough right now lord i release that anointing give men speed give men speed give men speed 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 by the power of the holy ghost give men speed run like elijah help them run like elijah help her help her run like elijah run like elijah grace for speed i release it i release it from my spirit i release it grace for speed no more stagnation no more retrogression run with the grace of elijah overtake the chariots of ahas hallelujah charity charity are you married the lord wants to give you two miracles huh number one god wants to settle you maritally do you believe that yes sir huh yes sir second what are you doing i just finished school i'm a graduate now Huh? i'm a graduate now you are a graduate yes, sir. i'm looking at you and i'm seeing abuja huh yes sir abuja yes what is abuja i have a fiance abuja. you have somebody there yes sir. that's the person to marry you okay, did you sir. tell me no sir did you tell me no. that's what i'm telling you i'm looking at you i said god will settle you Amen. maritally Amen. Huh? and then god will give you a job Amen. supernatural job Amen. because it's your desire Amen. god will give you a job Amen. the lord is saying i should prophesy to you i'm opening a new chapter over your life the past uh -uh. your future has to change it, the, what the past is is not a good testimony and the Lord is saying I'm giving you a new chapter a new chapter come my dear in the name of Jesus God is giving you a job may he connect you maritally huh? is your name charity is your name charity in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you delay ends now delay ends now i pray for your auntie let there be a miracle in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i minister to one more case before i pray i want to pray specifically for barren people i'm going to pray that before we we'll do a lot of other things before we call the sick out thank god there are many hands today and so we're able to do a very quick walk ladies when i count three just shout i receive don't worry follow me and do my stupid thing are you ready now one two three there is an opening there is an opening in the realm of the spirit there is an opening in the realm of the spirit many people are entering it 
I see it is a door of breakthrough. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. Shalom. Jehovah Shalom. Shalom. You're mighty in this place. You welcome in this place. I tell you, if, if God would open your eyes to see the breakthroughs that I see being released to people in the realm of the spirit, doors, strange doors. I told you there is grace for increase. There is grace for increase. There is grace for increase. The language tonight is more, 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 more. There is more, more anointing, more grace, more unction, more wisdom. There is more. There is more in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. The Lord is leading me to pray for brothers. Lift your hands. You'll be surprised to see what will happen to you now. The Lord wants to release grace for establishment. Listen, there is such an anointing. Don't be foolish. Receive it. Receive it with all your spirit. There is a spirit, especially in this side of the north. Men get established very late. Very late. Very late. You make money late. You build a house late. It's a bad spirit. God wants to release something. Those online, you can follow. I want to pray. God, I see this thing falling on many men. Jesus, it is your word. You have released this word. I put authority upon this prophecy and I declare, let it enter like an arrow into the life of men. Right now, take it. Receive that grace right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. At the count of three. One, two, three. Take it now. Take it now. Help them. Grace, grace strange establishment doors opening doors opening in their own accord help them doors opening i put you in a platform spiritually where you experience speed and establishment in the name of jesus help them please so they don't enjoy themselves my god be established be established be established be established. I lose your hands. I untie your hands. Every brother here, I untie your hands. Be established by the Spirit. Be established by the Spirit. Go and buy that land by the Spirit. Go and build that house by the Spirit. I open strange doors. Don't say you are too young. It's an anointing. It's not your effort. Receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now leave those who are standing here very quickly. If you are here specifically, please listen. You are here specifically trusting God to stamp the feet of Satan in your family over the issue of children. You know, God announced beginning of October that the theme for this miracle service, you've had the testimonies. Please don't say they have prayed for me before. Don't allow that unbelief destroy you. Are we together? While you are coming, there is a lady who will shout under the anointing. It is the grace that will release this grace for fruitfulness. It's a loud shout. It will be loud enough for everyone to hear. By the Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we give you praise. That's a shout there. That's the shout by the spirit. There is an anointing to pray for the barren. Come, please. All those, whether man, woman, if you are married, look, don't come out here if you are not married. Why are they here? Why are they all here? You must be married. Except if you are standing in for someone. Don't stand here doubting. There is an anointing. I see a river. Some of you, as you are standing right now, the power of God will come on you. Just before I even start praying. Look at this. 
Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Lift your voice in one minute and sing it from your heart. Will you open up the gate? for you by myself that's the instruction i will do it very fast you don't have to tell me any stories i don't care what they said low sperm count um infertility i don't care the report as you receive that touch if you are standing for someone call them let them know you are praying for them are we together now don't just say i receive and then you stand there let the people know what god is doing i'll have to do this very fast after that we'll pray for the sick generally we have a lot to do don't lose touch of this don't come for koinonia and then sit down this is not a museum let your heart be connected because there are different things happening in the realm of the spirit i'm going to be very fast i'm seeing listen i'm seeing something like a bird is jumping out of a lady now one person here i don't know who that person is but the lord is asking that until that happens like a bird that's what i'm seeing father in the name of jesus who is that person let there be that miracle right now it's like something will just leave you just leave you just leave you and release you and release you by the power of the holy spirit now as i pray for you many of you strange things will happen some of you are standing for other people but as i pray for you god is securing something in your life you don't have to come out please if you do not belong to this category that's the lady i'm talking about now i'll pray quickly just give us um uh, uh, keys just play something very quickly father in the name of jesus let everyone here return with a miracle child no matter what the spirit is no matter what the issue is fibroid infertility low sperm count whatever i don't care what the name is it must live right now in the name of jesus please shift very quickly as i lay my hands on you it is done receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace now go and carry your miracle child madam carry your miracle baby carry it now carry it now my god i tell you i see babies literally in the realm of the spirit carry it now carry it now carry it right now carry it right now miracle 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 there is an unusual grace here there is an unusual grace unusual grace unusual grace unusual grace as I lay my hands on you, it is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Heal now. Open up the gates in the name of Jesus. Grace, grace, grace. Shabala da bala da ba. Reke teke te. Embro to 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 bala da bala da ba. da ba. Grace, grace, grace. Help them, please. Let's save time. Grace, receive your miracle, baby. My God, my God, testimonies, wombs opening, fertility be restored. Receive it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. In the name of Jesus, bring it. In the name of Jesus. 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 Return with the miracle child. 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 
return with the miracle child. No barrenness. Out. Out now. Release her now. Now. Out. Out of her. Return with your child. Miracles. 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 In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing twins in the realm of the spirit. The Lord is showing me twins. Somebody is carrying twins. Out. Let her go now. I command that spirit. Release her in the name of Jesus. Release her right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Let it be open. In the name of Jesus. Grace. 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 is healing irregular menstruation irregular menstruation for one woman is being healed right now so that you can carry your baby receive your child out out of her now return with your miracle child now Now, 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost, let her go now. Keep praying in the spirit, don't just watch miracles, miracles. is anointing you. Receive that anointing now. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Grace, grace, grace. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace, 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 grace. Open. Open now. Open now. I see a womb that is closed. Open now. Shaka baradoka toka I want a woman to come up. Yes. I'm seeing a woman who is pregnant. You have been having nightmares. Somebody comes to you in the night. You have you even wake up shouting. You've not been able to sleep. There is a pregnant woman here with that situation. God wants to set you free. Please, where are you? If you care for you, can come and God will set you free right now. You are pregnant, but I'm seeing you having very bad dreams. Like a nightmare. Madam, look at me. You are standing for yourself. For someone. I'm brought to Shobre de Gedi Baladaba. Ah, hallelujah. I'm seeing something that is not nice. I need to pray for a lady here. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. I don't know if you have the courage. If you have the courage, I can pray for you. Please don't be embarrassed. This is a family. Something like a living thing. 
it almost looks like a physical living thing like a worm or like a snake literally comes out of your private part it comes out and goes back this is like a, a living a real object please wish that i have to pray for you like i said if you have the courage there's nothing to be ashamed what who is this one why is she here coughing out no 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 don't bring her in jesus name you okay come in jesus name it is done the lord sets you free by the power of the holy spirit i need to pray for that lady honestly this is a serious thing in fact it's not just one i'm seeing two of you come and stand here something it looks like a worm but it's bigger than it you see it it comes out and goes back on its own who is that you're the one god bless you for your courage can you celebrate her don't be afraid see look let me tell you this is this is like a spiritual hospital so this is not a place immediately i saw it even me i honestly i my body was doing me one kind but i thought you have to say this is bad it's like a doctor madam and you love god oh. don't be afraid huh do you know this thing where are you from because I'm looking at you, you are supposed to be a very great woman. I look at you and I see somebody. Ah, this is strange. I'm seeing, let me show you what I'm seeing. I'm looking at this and I'm seeing witchcraft from Delta State. I'm seeing you, but I'm seeing a white woman. I'm seeing a white woman, but I'm seeing you. And the Lord is telling me that you speak like a white woman. That's the vision that I'm seeing. Say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I didn't know that. Look at me. My dear, look at me. Because I'm seeing this. You look far, far, far older than your age. Somebody even see you and say, Mommy, there's no mommy anything. You need prayers because you too, are you married? You are trusting God for a life partner. It's even why you came here. Look at this. The devil is a liar. See, I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of the waster that will want your life to keep going without achievement i'm praying for you now may that devil live your life forever in the name of jesus the spirit of a waster lives your life forever in the name of jesus i use her as a point of contact this is a nice woman she didn't bargain for this and she loves god are you seeing that now who knows probably you were trained by white men or she speaks very intelligently but everything grounded hold my hand man to a point that that do you know what it means another object did you plant an object in your body comes out through you at will goes back at will for those of you who think witchcraft is not real you are joking you are watching one right now not pile oh i'm not talking of pile Hold my hands, my hands. I'm angry in my spirit. In the name of the Lord God that I serve, I speak to you from the depth of my spirit. Right now, I command that devil, let her go now. Out! Out! In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on your stomach. I command that wicked spirit, whatever your name is, don't only leave her, pack your load with you and go out of this woman's life i restore you even physiologically in the name of jesus christ this old face is not your own you are not that old i change it in the name of jesus christ help her give jesus praise father thank you supernatural miracle supernatural miracle supernatural miracle supernatural miracle in the name of jesus christ hold my hands it's over over in the name of jesus over in the name of jesus it's over in the name of jesus there's one mama here the anointing of the spirit is going to come upon you for praying for barren people there's one mama here i'm seeing in a vision the power of God will land on you. You, you may not even be expecting it. Not everybody. This, this is an, like an elderly woman. But I'm seeing an anointing. Right now, wherever you are. Father, something will land. It's like fire. It will land on one man now. Supernatural grace. 
you will start laying hands on the sick. Oh, that's a woman there. Help her. Help her, please. Bring her here. Supernatural anointing. Supernatural anointing for the for barrenness. Look at this. Look at this. This is an elderly woman, for God's sake. Shera taba roto koto baradia, lembra bata tatso kedia, ekara takata latotia. Father, take her to that level. I stand upon this apostolic and prophetic grace, and I bring you to that realm. Release miracles to women in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, please help her. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural. Supernatural. Daddy. Why is he here? Why is our daddy here? Who brought him out? You came on your own, sir? For barrenness? You? Where is your wife, sir? She is here, but I can't locate her now. Madam, come. You will see a man like hold my hand, sir. You will see a man like this and think he has a child. You have a child. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Yes. How old are you, sir? Don't be embarrassed. You are 57. You will still have your child. Where is your wife? Wife. Is she here? Is the wife here? She's not here. You are not sure. She's around here. You are sure she's around? Yes. Madam, if you are around, please, I want to pray for you and your husband. Otherwise, um, we can just pray and continue, please. So that we don't waste time. In the name of Jesus Christ, supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. You can imagine the kind of oppression. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Your wife is not here. She's not coming out. Or is she under the anointing? Huh? Whose name? Maybe she doesn't want to come out. I hope she's not. She's here. What's her name, sir? Esther. Esther Atuluku. Please, you have had your name, madam. That's your husband calling you. Can you rush, please, so that we save time? Is she here? Is she outside? Otherwise, I'll just pray for him, please, so that we'll save time. There's a lot to do. Daddy, how long have you been married, sir? 32 years. 32 years. If you ever tell me wickedness is not real, if you ever tell me wickedness is not real, our daddy's children would have been married now with their own children. Ejimi, am I correct? Look at this. Abraham waited 25 years. Our daddy has waited 32 years. Sir, you came here by faith. You are our father here. And you did not feel embarrassed to come out and stand here. Look at me, sir. I want you to look at my eyes so that you will know that I'm the one that has told you. In the name of Jesus, I don't care whether your wife has passed menopause or not. I don't care whether she can give birth or not. I decree to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, hold my hand, sir. You will not have a child. You will have children. Listen, sir. I'm not saying God told me to tell you. I am telling you. There is something called a prophet's reward. In the name that is above all names, I speak over your life. That force of darkness that has vowed that you will not have continuity, I cancel it right now. Sir, you are struggling financially. I have to pray for you. God wants to open a door for you. I, I hope you are not embarrassed sir, that I'm talking to you. Please hold my hands. Jesus, please change our daddy's story. Let 32 years of barrenness come to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Now, please, we are going to be very fast. You are here for yourself. You are not married. You are standing for something. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural miracle. Now, we are going to be very fast. You can see it's past nine, but there are so many things we need to do. We are going to do two things at the same time. All those who are here trusting God for any miracle, any miracle aside from barrenness, except if you have another thing, I don't care what it is. Please, you are going to come. There are men of God here 
We are going to lay hands on you very quickly. It's a miracle service. Now, look at this. I want you to organize yourself. Uh, those outside, hold on, please. Hold on. Overflow 2. Just walk right to the front. You don't have to come here. Overflow 2. The whole of those occupying the roadside. Just walk right to the front of your, your stage there. Overflow 1 here. Just walk right to the front here. All those who are here, you can just come out. Come out, organize yourself. You are sick. Or you are standing in for people. Jesus. Listen. If you are standing here for impartation, go back. Please. Please, please. Don't make a fool of yourself. We are going to pray for you. I know some of you just want me to touch you. There's nothing wrong with you. Don't play games with God. Go back to your seat. You will receive impartation. Some of you, there's nothing wrong. You just want in case if there's something, I should still pray. Go back. Please, we don't have that time. Are we together now? I'm not joking. Please, there is no time. Huh? so those outside just obey instructions please some of you think i'll have to be the one to touch you that's unbelief i i spent time talking about faith here just walk outside stand there overflow look at how many people pastor for god's sake look at this look at how many people huh? almost everybody look at standing for somebody the devil wants to destroy people. Have you noticed that in the last one month, there's been an outbreak of mysterious sicknesses. Someone will just get up in the morning and you cannot breathe again. That devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. And I also understand there have been mysterious accidents. You are minding your business, car will jam you, bike will jam you. We are going to take care of all those things today. It's called a miracle service. Now, this is what will happen. Please and please anybody who lays hands on you just go back to your seat believing in faith we don't have time to take testimonies i know there are so many miracles if we do that we're going to spend time here there are other things we need to do are we together now so i will pray for you you can see there are so many people uh let's do it this way pastor pete is with me here so um pastor pete ah no edgy you know what edgy pastor femi you can go outside you can just handle that that one there pastor alpha pastor alpha kenny and um mike please you handle that one benga you will join here me him and pastor edgemi and you and who you and pastor femi yes we are not just I don't think just because you are a pastor don't look at me i'm walking by the spirit i don't have to call you are not playing games this is not about ministry there is grace are we together pastor alpha please Outside, Kenny, Mike, Promise, West Promise, join a Jimmy, Promise, Femi, and, and Pastor Jimmy, outside, please. Just guide them protocol they, so that don't waylay anybody. Please behave yourself. Don't disturb anybody. I'm here with Pastor Pete Benga. We are going to pray. In the name that is above all names, shout amen. amen. Father, we are standing in unity from three different points. You have anointed this ministry to be a supernatural ministry and bring healing and miracles to your people. Lord, every man of God represented here, as we lay hands on your people, it doesn't matter what the situation is. Let there be healing. Let there be deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ, as we minister to you, any spirit that is at work in your life must be casted out. In the name of Jesus Christ, Please, guys, we have to be very fast so that we'll save time, Pastor Sir. Thank you so much. Worship, help us, please. We'll be very fast. Now, all those sitting and around, those online, just connect by faith. There's nobody touching you physically, but the Holy Ghost is there. He's representing us and he will touch you. While that is happening concurrently, please, your miracle, um, uh, your prayer request, pass it, ushers, if you can connect yourself. I know that there are not many of you. Protocol, you can help them, please pass your prayer request if someone sent a text to you now you can copy it quickly please pass your prayer request while laying hands on you if they give you a prophetic word receive it please guys don't waste time on one person let's just do it fast jesus will give you praise i have no other god but you now i have no other God but you. 
right now. And you have and done Jesus. what no man has done. Please, as they pray for you, just quietly you go back to your seat. Rejoicing. Go back to your seat. Check yourself.
make sure you sub make sure you're submitting your prayer requests make sure you're submitting your prayer requests and then when they pray for you you don't have to go back to another line once they pray for you i'd like you to believe you will see god is doing miracles Your prayer requests. I exempted Pastor Jakes for a reason. 
the Lord gave me a word and then I'm going to give him and um, are we together now? Praise the Lord. There is an anointing that is going to release upon you now before before we come to prayer. I know there are people. How far have we gone? Those outside? There's still a number of people. Okay, rise up on your feet, please, quickly. Jakes. The Lord gave me an instruction to tell him to speak prophetically and release an anointing and a grace. Honestly, I don't know what anointing it is, but I want you to believe something heavy will come upon your life. Are you hearing me? Those outside, whether you are joining the line, they can still be praying for you while you receive this. It's going to be a very quick one. And then, um, ushers, please, let's have the request so that we can finish it because I'm still going to speak in your life and there will be some activations. Bless you, sir. for worship a strong unction David down the Lord is going to be placing upon you an anointing an anointing it will come upon you pare sufre tinda ilo si predia rekito fiesta kila handa ha ora que te chupelenda pragadose rekete gapaka kokosho ke palagana renda pa freia so palenda ha Resa profilesta kalionde barasoko palagada. I feel like the fire of God moving upon the ground. It will come upon the feet of many now. Upon the feet of many, the fire of God will come upon your feet. The fire of God will burn your feet. There's a fire quickening. My God. Palio friesa kiata laronte barus itateli. Tonight 
tonight the Lord will open up portals for many as you sleep tonight. <laughs> Some of you have an experience of seeing a ladder as angels will ascend and descend bringing messages to you tonight, 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 tonight by the power of God's Holy Ghost. By the power of God's Holy Ghost. By the power of God's Holy Ghost. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are standing here in the midst of Yeah, I sent the Lord's presence. <laughs> Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. And as we worship you, you build your soul. And as we worship you, you build your soul. Jesus, and take, take your place. We'll hurry up while the other ministers are busy ministering to the people outside. We are going to pray on the request now. Pastor Pete is going to lead us. Pastor Sajex, please help me since you're the only one here. We are praying for your request. I want you to believe God. Stretch your hands over this place. And I want you to begin to pray in the spirit, everybody. Stretch your hands. You are praying in the spirit. We may not be able to minister directly to everyone. But I want you to believe that God will touch you. Don't just stand watching. Make sure you pray. Stretch your hands. Those online, I want you to know that your requests are with us. We are laying hands by faith also. Those online, you are part of this. Stretch your hands right now as we pray. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father in your divine wisdom. When you wanted to communicate to us the mysteries of your will. Lord you wrote it down for us to read. In the same vein oh God. Your sons and your daughters gathered across the nations. Those that are here. Those that are across the world. From the internet. They have written their own requests, understanding the mystery of the scribes. That whatever is written has a spiritual significance. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we release the angels that respond to the prayers of men. The angels in Revelations chapter 8 that burn those prayers as incense and they ascend to the throne room of God right now by the power of god let those angels move swiftly in the name of jesus an angel appeared unto daniel and said i have come because of your word 
Father, let the angels respond according to this request. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Nothing here written will go back unanswered. We prophesy in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the prayer of a righteous man availed much. Father, we are on our knees on this mountain, at this altar, bringing this request before the throne room of God. And the Bible says, he that goeth before the throne boldly shall come back, O God, with results and answers, and the grace and the mercies of God shall be released. Right now, we release grace. And Lord, we release mercy. In the name of Jesus. Every prayer written in this ground, upon this mountain, it is answered in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. If any change will happen, it depends on you and God. If your generation must hear your voice, it depends on you and God. Pray. Zika pratoko soto lama karyada baladaba. Shekete pretege de bosh. Pray. Lekata paka proto soto barike de bele de bokoriadaba. I choose to be different. I come from a family where no one has reason. Excuses here and there. We are from Kogi State, that's why. Excuses here and there. We are from the north, that's why. Excuses here and there. My father was a drunkard. My mother was a prostitute. I was born out of wedlock. Kill that excuse. It's a deception from the pit of hell. Manda kala prati gele boko so prandi geri ataba hashara balada bara 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 bara. I'm a lady, that's why they should take care of me. Kill that excuse. I have failed, that's why I tried and failed. Kill that excuse. I gave God a chance and He didn't do anything. Kill that excuse. Hallelujah. Listen. Never try to waste your time. I'm giving you an advice that will bless you. Never try to waste your time investing in people who have not come to a point where they are willing to take responsibility for their lives. You will be casting your pearl before swine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Never waste your time and energy attempting to communicate truths to people who have not indicated a genuine passion for transformation. You will waste your time. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh in his heart. The summation of my ideologies. So I believe my father is a wicked man. Because he would have sold the car and given me the money. Because I had to fend for school for myself. And that ideology becomes your template of interpreting life. Hallelujah. Let me share a few things. Your mindset determines your response to God, to people, to Satan, to challenges, and to success. Your mindset, your ideologies determines your response to God, people, Satan, challenges, and ultimately success.
the bible keeps telling us again and again solomon speaking again and again and encouraging believers of the need to guard our heart God is in it let's look at that scripture very quickly proverbs chapter i believe four four verse 23 am i right four verse 23 let's look at it quickly yes it says keep your heart with all what diligence seriousness tenacity it says for out of it are the issues of life brothers and sisters listen listen to me please look at me i submit to you i have seen people suffer i have seen the bitter weep that the negligence to this truth will bring to any life and bring to any family you can choose to listen to what i am telling you and contend for change or you can stand where you are and watch life whip you until you lose your faith lose your salvation and ultimately end up in hell is that serious keep your heart it is your responsibility keep your heart with all diligence for out of it out of your ideologies are the issues the decisions that frame your life and destiny your mindset about culture your mindset about women your mindset about god your mindset about money and prosperity your mindset about increase your mindset about hard work and diligence hallelujah listen let me tell you wishing has never changed the life of any man wishing only only gives you a false emotional consolation oh i wish i'll be anointed like pastor james oh i wish i'll be able to do this oh i wish that god will use me i know he'll use me one day forget that deceit there is what you do here and now that makes you know whether you are usable or otherwise let me give you a little preview into the financial series that we're going to be having in it i teach on the power of decisions do you know the difference between a decision and a wish this is it i want to drink water is a decision that's the water there i want to drink water is a wish or a strong desire i decide to drink water means i set it as a goal and i am ready to find out what it takes to get that water are you seeing that now a decision is different from a desire in that a decision is backed up with the willingness to satisfy the conditions to get that result many people wish for the anointing oh i wish i wish many people wish for a big church many people wish for a million naira or million dollar status i'm a millionaire in the name of jesus christ no power will stop me uh, stories this is why people look at christian and things they think we're idiots because we keep fooling and kidding ourselves again and again say i decide to make impact i decide to be relevant i decide to do big things for the kingdom hallelujah guard your heart with all diligence why because your life is a reflection of, of, of your ideologies i've taught this but let me recap on it again very quickly remember i told you that there is a law the law of manifestation and that law is that your physical reality eventually becomes a reflection of your mindset the inner workings of your mind is what will eventually become your physical reality are you getting what i'm saying that means your physical life is a revelation of the summation or the quality of your ideologies by and large your mentality about prosperity will show physically by 
by and large, your mentality about God and the principles of the kingdom will show. By and large, your mentality about marriage will show in children calling you a loving daddy or a stupid Dracula who is killing them. By and large. By and large, your mentality about success and productivity will speak otherwise. Meaning, our physical environment right now is a gradual reflection of the reality in our mind. Are you getting what I'm saying? Watch this. Compare a general overseer of a ministry or president or whatever. Key, or let me use a, a term that is now. Compare a CEO, right? Of a company who sits down in a large office. You know how intimidating the office can be. With AC, flat screen, right? All kinds of things. Cup of coffee, tea, all kinds of things. And a secretary around. And you see the poor people in the company angry at their director, wicked man. He's the one enjoying. And the megad is there opening gates hundreds of times a day and receiving 10 or 15,000. And the megad convinces himself that the ogre is not fair. This man is not doing anything. He just sits down on a chair, signs papers, writes a few things, and he's getting millions. My challenge is this transfer them for two months transfer them meaning tell the may god we hereby give you this office is yours for two months and tell the ogre go to the gate the ogre is going to do something in that gate that will make people stop coming to the office they will start waiting at the gate there is a mentality are you getting my point he's going to look and say is there something we can do is there something we can do right there at the gate he will start consultancy services right there at the gate he will think and say how can i reduce this effort how can i reduce the physical effort and then he may create a chain or a rope where he just sits down and drive or try to make a digital gate are you seeing that now whereas the other man sits down holding one wood and metallic detector and and and, and a, the keys bunch of keys to a gate Meanwhile, let's go to our man in the office there. The man is in the office and when he sits down, the next thing is he opens the fridge, sees apples, dates, all kinds of things and he says, my soul find rest. He forgets. No, no, no. See how cheap his mindset is. He forgets that that company is at the mercy of his decisions and he's eating. And quickly he sees some little money and he carries that money quickly and hides it. And he thinks, what can I sell quickly? And they say, oh, God, generator has spoiled. He say, leave it there. In two months, that office becomes his mindset. Are you seeing that now? You come in and see it dirty, scattered. They've sold a lot of things. They've sold the company generator. They've done all sorts of things. Right? Workers are not paid. Whereas you find out that the the blessed man, the CEO, has changed the gate. And he will make it become something. What is the difference? Their mindset. They think the difference is money. They think the difference is expensive suits and expensive cars. No. Those things are a reflection of something. When you see a man mightily used by God, his life is a reflection of something. Are we, are we following? Are we together? The next time you see a man you consider to be anointed or blessed, do not envy what you see. Try to buy into their mind and transfer it to yourself and your life will follow suit. Are we blessed? That's why success is, is transferable. If I can transfer to you what is in my mind, you will be like me. But you will stop at my limit. If I can transfer to you what I have and challenge you to rise higher, you will be higher than me. You see that? Preachers preach out of the abundance of their mindset. A preacher who is not, for instance, an entrepreneur, 
and knows nothing about leadership and organization has a pattern that he teaches people. All he would tell people is just pray and be serious. The God of favor, God of honor, God of this, the God who located me will locate you and the people shout amen. And they stop there and they become a congregation of weak and beggarly people. The preacher himself not knowing why he's successful. He thinks he's successful because he's preaching. No. Guard your heart. There is a mentality you have right now that is stopping friends from you. There are some of you, you can never have friends because there are certain mindsets and ideologies that drive every destiny helper who comes into your life. Something about you resents people from you. And if you do not take the time to study it and change and say, I'm like that. My mother never had any friend, only me. You see it, the transference. Let me talk about two quick ideologies or mental attitudes that have sponsored failure in the lives of people. Right? Number one, is the mindset that bets what we know today to be low self-esteem. Write that word down. It's very important. I'm about to say something that will bless you. What is low self-esteem or what we call complex? Please look up. Low self-esteem is the feeling or the mindset that brings a man to a position where he believes or he is convinced consciously or subconsciously that you are not good enough that you are perpetually at a state of disadvantage that there is always something you need to do to your life to meet up to a standard a status quo are you getting my point it's a terrible mindset a terrible mental state of being because it produces dangerous fruits and we're about to see a few of them let me tell you, the foolishness of many people in society, from preachers to businessmen to fathers to leaders, is motivated by this poisonous mindset, subtle but dangerous. Low self-esteem. What does low self-esteem do? Low self-esteem, when it is matured in a man, becomes the sponsor for an extravagant life becomes the sponsor for aggression and looking down on people becomes the sponsor uh, for downplaying people as a way of trying to show your relevance so all that fight for titles all that fight for recognition all that impatience that drives people into living an extravagant life is primarily because of a deep-seated mentality of low self-esteem are we blessed so a lady believes that until she plants a particular kind of hair she can be beautiful and guys will not see her wherever she got that ideology and then she finds out that the weave on is 15,000 and that becomes a goal she's under pressure borrowing money trying to prove all kinds of things and then when she buys it and puts it she's hoping that now she has been able to attain a status quo is God speaking to us? So we have preachers with their clubs and societies. Right? That is based on something they believe they have to do to match up. So a man of God thinks I can teach but I can't prophesy. And his complex begins to sponsor him to look for prophetic grace anyhow. Are you getting my point? Even to the point of witchcraft. And when he gets it, he now believes that when that prophetic grace is added to me, I will be like so, so, so man of God. Are you seeing that now? A poisonous mindset. This is what is responsible for the hatred of brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers. A father will fight with his wife because the father believes that this woman is a CEO and I am an assistant director. And his complex makes him feel do something to bring her down. Are we blessed now? Low self-esteem. A mindset that stops people from moving and taking the path to success gradually. 
Low self-esteem has been the reason for incessant impatience, especially in young people. They want to buy the car now. They want to marry now. Right? They want sharp, sharp money now. Sharp, sharp success. You want to start a ministry and in four months have a record-breaking 5,000 crowd. Low self-esteem. To prove. And you say, go and tell them in the village, God is at work here. You see that? Tell who? Them. That means there is a them you have been working for. There is somebody that you say, I must show this man that I am nothing. It's not enough reason. Is God helping us? Many of us have lost precious friends because of low self-esteem. Our low self-esteem makes us to interpret even a sincere compliment from a negative angle because you believe that you must do something to match up. Who is God speaking to tonight? We have all sorts of enemies and all sorts of people. I look at people who I know at the level I am now I cannot even wear the clothes they are wearing and some of them are students you know that God just blessed them and opened a small door for them but that low self-esteem especially ladies sisters say amen especially these ladies you will see a tiny lady moving around self-esteem is pushing her and she goes to meet an on one big ungodly military officer you know that she can destroy her life because she wants to say I am going out with somebody in judging right and that oh you think i don't know you are joking <laughs> is god speaking to us there are many preachers they start preaching now and they say kai if i go they won't they won't they won't know that they won't acknowledge me so let me start going on air and the grace to go on air has not been released so the resources to back it up is not there and they keep yoking their members week after week there are business people who start a business now and they say they want to do international business. They go and die in Italy or go and die in Brazil. Right? Low self-esteem. Being a motivation for many things. That's why you see preachers. Come, please. Look at men of God, for instance. When another man of God is about to see one, everybody is standing to see who will greet who. As a proof. Right? Meaning that the one who greets one is accept you see we carry our villages we carry our pain we carry our backgrounds mix it with the anointing mix it with ministry and off we go misleading many people yes. so he comes to me and then i cannot greet him there are geos who will never turn and greet their people and just say god bless you how are you no because if you, how can I greet him? You greet my boy. You see that? Your village is haunting you. Your background is haunting you. A poisonous mindset haunting you. Don't just laugh. I'm, I'm serious, very serious as I speak here. There are ladies who believe they have to behave in a certain way to show they are not cheap. If, I, if you talk softly to guys, they will joke with you, give it to them and they will respect you. That's your mentality. So God brought your husband 10 times and you drove him 10 times. Because something in your mind, you live around the mediocre just like you in the room. And all of them convince themselves. It's amazing how we mess up and people clap for us. You do something very stupid that demands flogging. And you go and meet people who think like you and they say, guy, guy you represented us. Look, let me tell you, let me tell you, listen, listen. You can decide to make up your mind and change or live in that false sense of success. There are some of us moving around, lying to people. Oh, we are millionaires. We are this and that and that. We are this and that and that. You carry your friend's car. You say it's, it's your car. You, you find that? All of those things, some of us are sitting right now. Aside from maybe you just beg somebody, the clothes you are wearing is not your own. The watch you are wearing is not your own. The shoe you are wearing is not your own. The phone you are using is not your own. You borrowed your friend's phone for three days. What for? What's the point? What are you proving? An Android device? Shame on you. If that becomes the whole circumference upon which your life revolves in, that mankind, we make ourselves too cheap. 
And so we do not celebrate what we are and where we are. We do not celebrate what God is doing in our lives. We rush levels. We are not thorough in the dealings of God in our lives. And we end up with casualties. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. That mindset of inferiority right now is what has made some people not to relate with certain friends that can help them. Because you think this person is a villager. My, if, I, if I react like that, no, 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 no. There are some of us, if somebody looks at you in the secret place and speaks his language, not just to mock you, but just a nice conversation, let's connect. You say, please don't embarrass me here. Please, I've told people my, my, I'm half caste. My father is from where and where. Don't come and, 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 and fall my hand here. Hallelujah. I once was talking to a preacher and he looked at me and I said, do I know how much his, his suit is that he was wearing? And I was shocked. In the middle of a destiny molding conversation, you stop me and ask me how much your suit is what? What in the world is that? I just, the anointing just lifted. I just knew that there's nothing to tell this person. Say in the name of Jesus. I am proud of my level. I will rise gradually. There's no point trying to fake success. I will pay the price and be successful. Hallelujah. Very important. Low self-esteem. Many of us here are suffering from it. It's what is responsible for gossip. It's what is responsible for backbiting. That spirit, that feeling of low self-esteem is the attitude that will sponsor your not celebrating the success of others. So the moment Mary says, I just bought a jeep. Say, Mary, what a jeep. Where did she get the money from? Mary, Mary that I know. Something is fishy. I must find out. Find out what? And you see, when you are determined to find out things, you will always find something. Is that true? Low self-esteem. Number two. Is the mindset that leads to what I call an uncultured use of words. Uncultured use of words. Psalms 141 verse 3. An uncultured use of words. God is helping us tonight. An uncultured use of words. Psalm 141 verse what? Psalm 141 verse 3. Everyone read. One to read. It said, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Look at me. There are many of us right now where you are seated. The devil of your destiny. That which has chained you and made nonsense out of your life. Is this gate called your lips. Hallelujah. The gate of uncultured words. Many of us have killed the dreams of people because we spoke something to them. Many of us have destroyed the destinies of people because we spoke words. Many of us have torn friends apart because of an uncultured word. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know that these decoration people, there's a way they behave? Uncultured words. Many of us have had witchcraft attack because our mouth introduced us to things we should keep. Ah, do you know, see that lady, that fine one, the other one, that very fine one, that's my wife. In fact, I'm even planning, I think I should get to Germany, hopefully. There's one morning I'm waiting, and while you are talking, the elder is nodding. Say, where did you even say you are going again? Say, Germany. Everything has been working. All of a sudden, everything scatters. Our mouth. There are many of us, you plan to buy a car in 10 years. You have, I'm not saying confession of faith. Telling people, look, in fact, right now, the last time we went to Kotonou, and it's a lie pressure to say things that should not be set a watch put a gate oh god
word in my mouth that I will know when to speak. Nobody mocked you because they did not know you were barren. You carried your mouth, running it around, telling people and saying, don't tell anybody. For what? Say, don't, I don't know you, don't tell anybody. It's me that said, Benga's wife, this and that and that happened. How we have put ourselves in trouble because we cannot shut our mouths. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was you that revealed to an armed robber that 10 million came into your father's account. They came, broke his head, broke your house, broke everything, broke the safe, removed the money. And he said, Kai, this world is a wicked world. Set a guard over my mouth. Let me tell you, you must learn to know when to speak and when to keep quiet. Many of you have made fools out of yourself because your father came and met you and said, I'm leaving your mother. And instead of you to be matured, you say, leave her, Jared. She's a wicked woman. Only for you to hear her own side. And she said, there's something I've not told you. Your father has been cheating on me from the day you were born. I've been enduring. And then you stand stupefied because you have backed your father and ran your mouth against your mother. Are you getting what I'm saying? The height of mental maturity in terms of communication is when you know when to speak and when to keep quiet. When to speak and when to keep quiet. Some of you people come to you for counseling and say, I've been fornicating or I've been suffering from masturbation. I've been doing immediately. You feel you say, ah, God is changing life. So say, what happens? Say, Man, the rate at which masturbation is disturbing people. I can't, ah, ah some brothers that you don't even expect you see that keep a watch oh God over my mouth keep a watch a guy came and met you and said look oh um, I'm, 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 we are going to get married let me just calm down I'm trusting God for some finances to come before you knew it you have sent text to 11 ladies you chief bridesmaid you this and then later the guy will say I'm not doing and the friend say how far our marriage say, hey, God is working and you are under pressure because you've run your mouth saying what you should not say the Bible says, a word spoken in due season. There is a due season for communication. Is God helping us? Mindsets. 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 Many of our parents go and run their mouths in the villages. Oh, I've been promoted. I'm a millionaire now. In fact, the last check entered and they said, there's one village project. Please, we're allocating the task of five million naira to you. And you see that the children are crying and suffering. And the man is building a community somewhere. Because your mouth, your mouth destroyed you. One time, one lady came and met me. She thought it was good news. Very respectable um, man of God that she was going out with. And I think one time, I don't know. Let me assume the guy was carried away. And he wanted to make advances on her. And do a lot of things. And you know, she advised him. And at the end, he felt bad. He said, look. I don't know what came over me. Let's pray this and that. And then she came to talk to me. And she, she thought it was going to be a good news. She says, honestly, I need to tell you something. It's not every man of God that is a man of God. Who, I knew where she was going to. I listened to her. Uh, there are some things you don't come to me for. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then she came and met me. That ah, this and that and that. This person did this. Can I imagine? that this person did this she was so disappointed she's still been disappointed she still did this and i said shame on you one because you were was it not in a room was it outside it happened you went to the room you were also tempted you will not accept that part of your role the role you played in seducing him you are you saying you did not see the advancement coming you were enjoying the attention until it got to the limit where you think you can take it is that not how it happens it was holding you, doing all kinds of things. You were enjoying it. When you felt it would now cross the boundary, what you call boundary, you now started talking and you are coming to report him rather than praying and humble yourself. I'm not justifying immorality. I'm talking about the foolishness of unguarded, uncultured communication. And the way she was talking to me, I know she has told more than hundreds of people right there. And you, you, you destroy. Now, listen. We are very disciplined people by the grace of God in this ministry. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it, many people have run down the churches and the ministry of others because of certain things. Especially this immorality thing. People come for counseling and they talk. They say all kinds of things. 
They say you are the, I, I remember one lady who met me and said, um, you are the only man of God in a long time who has talked to me without sleeping with me. I said, it's a sign that you need deliverance. While you are concentrating and saying people are doing this, there is a wicked spirit at work in you that is destroying people. Rather than thinking you are so seductive, you better find out that the hand of God needs to come upon your life to change it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Unguarded communication unguarded communications matters that don't concern you it's amazing you hear people talking about their father talking about their mother talking about their sister a lady met me and said ah that uh, her sister just got married though sharp sharp she's now pregnant i say shut your mouth you are you, you can imagine the stupidity of your communication look at what drives your mind Look, I'm teaching you this because it will save you trouble. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you are hated by people right now because you have joined the heads of too many people, including your destiny helpers. Every time they mention your name to live to, people say, may God forbid. I'd rather die than to give this person a job. This person is a destroyer of destiny. Have you seen people like that? You come in between two people who are in a relationship and you say, my brother, I'm a Christian, no. Oh, uh, I won't hide this thing from you. There's something I want to tell you about this lady. I saw the way you are blind flower, and blind f buying flower, and all of these things. All these things you are doing. What is this lady has been rocking her life since she was 13? You are just coming innocently. You don't know you. You think she's a nice lady, and the guy say, eh. "Well, I'm not saying she has HIV, but who knows? If there's something, go for a test. Mount. Some of us listen. Mindsets. Listen to me." It's not just to say we want to be successful. Are you getting what I'm saying? I remember when Benny Hinn had his scandal, for instance. Many people in the body of Christ did not stay to find out what happened. Everybody started moving, running down Benny Hinn. The following Sunday, many pastors were preaching. When they said they caught him with Paula White. Right now, the Creflo Dollar, you see it on, on news. The Creflo Dollar asked his congregation, to buy him 65 million naira jet. That's not true. That's not what happened. Are you seeing that now? Everybody, those who have been angry. There are people angry today that Kenneth Copeland is flying his jet. There are people angry at all kinds of, of, of things. And we run our mouth. We say all kinds of things. People have called their mothers witches. Called their fathers witches. Listen. Give yourself a warning and discipline your mouth. And say, Lord, keep my mouth shut when it needs to be shut. And to speak when it needs to speak. Hallelujah. Unguarded communications. They tell a man of God, lead offering. And he comes and says, uh, as I was leading the offering, the Lord said this. Stand up. To mean that he wants to show that he's a man of God. And you spend one hour just for offering unguarded use of your mouth you just disgrace yourself and threw yourself in ashes are we growing tonight some of these issues look little but this is what makes leaders out of people notice that leaders are calm people they are people who evaluate things they are people who look into things because one day somebody is going to say something about your life your ministry your business something is that true i remember when one woman i think somebody met me and said one woman was saying this koinonia we emphasize the holy spirit not jesus he said that's witchcraft that's signs of the end time and the person was hoping that i would respond to it and i just kept quiet i said glory be to jesus and that was the end of it because sometimes I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus that may you not run your mouth in the presence of your enemy and give him the key to destroy your life. From the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks and then it ruins your life and then you close doors of destiny over your life. Many things have been shot in our lives because of these mindsets. There are many others, but I decided to pick two to talk about. Still, the mental transformation. That God will raise people in this place who are leaders indeed. 
somebody comes to gossip to you and immediately he finishes the gossiping about tosin you tell the person let's hold hands and pray for her and the person is tongue and embarrassed and doesn't know what to do tomorrow they mark you as a real christian do you know why many preachers messages are not strong on the pulpit they know you outside of pulpit they know your life of gossiping and backbiting. They know your insincerity in handling the things of the kingdom. And so when you say God will bless you, the words are little. They don't carry weight. May God give you the gift of a friend that has discipline with words. May God give you the gift of a friend that will use his words to bless you. You may not understand the implication of what I'm teaching you. Well, I don't want us to just say, Lord, send the rain. I'm teaching you practical issues that will make you exceptional. People will look at your life and your ideologies will be compelling. And people will come and say, why? What is, what is the framework of your mind? And you will let them know that the Lord Jesus Christ has transformed your life. You will see jobs you did not apply for come to you only because you, of your calmness. Everything is not just about your certificate. You will find out when you finish that it takes more than certificate to reign. It's God speaking to us. Preachers, God cannot trust you with innocent people because you cannot hear their cases and keep quiet. God cannot trust you with, with all kinds of people. There are pastors, God cannot trust them with large members because the day you know that one member is a billionaire, that day, Everybody in the church will know that this guy is a billionaire and they will strangle him. Everybody will come and say, we are soliciting for financial support and run him down because he gave you tight of his billion. There are people in this place seated who are dangerously prosperous. Don't think everybody is struggling. There are people seated quietly here. I know them. There are people here who are dangerously anointed. Graced of God. There are people here whose parents, if you know the status, the societal status of their parents, you won't even go and knock their office yet. They are calm and quiet. The day I found out that one of our ladies here was the daughter of one prominent man, I was shocked. I was shocked at the humility and simplicity of that lady. The day I found out that this big man, this is the daughter, I said, my goodness, what humility. There are some of us. Your, your father was given caretaker or something of a local government and, and you wouldn't let anybody rest. I know that I'm hard on us tonight, but it's because I love you. I want to make leaders out of us. Not just men who are tongue talkers, but people who have the wisdom for living. Are you getting what I'm saying? Never sit down and entertain gossip. Be the one to drive that atmosphere away so that God will come and bless you. Never be the one. Let it not be your room that when they want to run down people, your room is the place where they meet. Say, let's meet at, at uh, that usual joint. And when you come, say, hey, before they reach, say, sit down first. Let me be serving you minerals as you do it. No. Let your room be the place where when you talk of destiny, when someone's life is down, he says, I know that I will go to Sam's house because if I can find my way there, I will find God. I will find hope. My neighbor has one friend that I told her in my, she may be here listening to me, in my opinion, that is one of the nicest women I have met in my life. And the most sincere woman. That my neighbor's friend. I've seen my neighbor two times when you know our regular human activities challenges. She shared her testimony here. And that woman will come to her and kneel down and pray and cry. She will come and see my neighbor washing and come immediately and collect the clothes and wash for her. I, there was a time she came, there was nobody. You know, sometimes I lock my door and you wouldn't know I'm around. She came in and there was nobody. Do you know what she did? She laid her hands on my neighbor's door and started weeping and said, Lord, will you open the door for my friend and bless my friend? She didn't know I was listening. Hi. I said, oh God, will you give our people in Koinonia wives like this? How many
many of you can be that true that you use your words well only to bless will you make up your mind that beginning from today i will set a guard over my mouth my mouth will not be the reason why i would destroy the life of another anything that proceeds from my mouth will only be that which carries blessings in israel if you cause somebody they will kill you because they understand the implication of words is god speaking to us tonight many of us have made ourselves cheap when you started out people respected you because you were a man of few words right now you have become a talkative and gradually you see that your respect has been going down have you seen people like that one moment they are rest in fact when they come they say sir good afternoon at the end of the conversation the woman say okay my son i've heard about you whereas where you came to say kind of man of god i i covet the grace upon your life but you threw away your honor everybody write this word down honor honor these are the principles that bring honor to your life value honor more than money value honor more than reputation money cannot give you honor but honor will give you blessings honor the ability to recognize and reward your difference is what we call honor uncommon principles that will make you exceptional Tonight's teaching may look simple, but it is indeed powerful. As a man thinketh, your mindset. I'm doing a re-engineering in our mind. A recalibration. Changing our perceptions from our various cultural standpoints. And connecting us to the attitude of the kingdom. That which make kings. That which make nobles. That which makes men wise. That which opens cheap doors for greatness. Two more things and we are going to pray. How do I engage? I've said it but then I will say it again and again. How do I engage in renewing my mind? When I find out that there is something flawed in my life. How do I start? Now I've found out that I have a poisonous communication. Now I've found out that I'm a bitter and envious person. I found out that I'm a jealous person. Negative dimension of jealousy. I found out that I'm suffering a lot of complex. I found out that I'm suffering failure and defeat. How do I begin to rise? Number one, you must admit and accept that you desire that there, there is a need for transformation in that area of your life transformation will never come till you are humble enough to accept there are some of us here god has been blessing us with all kinds of financial blessings but something about our mindset keep throwing money out of our lives favor brings money to your life wisdom throws it out of your life there are many of us who ministerial doors open up to us but the people never call us back because there is something about our mindset you go to preach in a church you don't study the way the church setting is you just stand and run your mouth and say anything anyhow to anybody you go to a church that is predominantly elders your packaging and communication must suit the context of your audience you go to a church that is filled with intellectuals. I've preached in all kinds of churches. And they like me. I've preached in all kinds of places. Because I pay the price to understand the people I'm communicating to. It's God speaking to us. So God opened the door of ministry. You now went to preach. You were preaching in, in, a, in a military cantonment. And you were speaking as if you were talking to market women. Because you did not know how to communicate her right. And they said, please, don't bring this man again. This man came to embarrass us. Our ogre was here. We thought God would glorify himself. God glorified himself. But this man, Kai, don't bring him again. And the door closes. And you see a man, six months, they've not called you to bless anybody. Not because you are not anointed. You have the anointing. But these mental adjustments. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of us, somebody comes to your life. And the mindset of courtesy and greeting the person. You just come and say, I am apostle, so, 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 and so. This and that and that. There was a young man that was standing. Well, while I returned from the trip, I was, I just ran to quickly refresh and come. And the young man just stood there. And I was asking the protocol, why is this guy here? He 
He said he came for prayer. I said, by this time, this is Koinonia. I can't see you now. He said, I've been coming and every time I come, I find out that your door is locked. So I decided to come now and stay. You see that? On a very good day, I would have said, so it's like nobody has introduced me to you. I'll be protocol. Can you let him know the kind of... No, 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 no. Yes, he did what was wrong, but at least solved the problem at that point since he's there. And bless him and then show him the right way to do it. That guy now will live loving me more. But he can live hating me. And say this person, he's going right there to go and preach. But this is a soul dying. So is your genuine test for souls true? Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Little foxes, brothers and sisters, spoil the vine little adjustments that we need to make to our lives to make us exceptional many of us are anointed no doubt but many of us cannot reign because the wisdom that makes for dominion the wisdom that makes men exceptional the wisdom that makes people extraordinary is deficient in our lives that mental adjustment one more time lay your hands on your head and say Lord Jesus I make up my mind to make the required adjustments for my greatness. I make up my mind to contend for change and contend for adjustment. I make up my mind to lay aside the old and to pick up the new. Hallelujah. I told you two more things. Write it down very quickly. Number one, Two more things I'm adding to what I've said that will make you exceptional. The attitude of courtesy. Courtesy. You know what we call courtesy? Decorum. Respect for people. That attitude that gives honor and courtesy and respect. Another word you can put is respect. The mindset where you hold people in high esteem is an adjustment that will make the rain fall in your life. It will make you a magnet. By and large, after preaching, there are things you do that makes you lovable. It makes you inviting. Look at me. Come, Sam. If Sam comes and finishes preaching, watch this. And then I come up as a man of God and I just collect the mic from him. And I say, Sam, that's nice. My boys are really growing. You see that? Watch this. Am I anointed? Yes. Do I love God? Do I love souls? Do you think my relationship with Sam will be sustainable? No. Because I simply violated his self-worth to prove a point. There's no attitude of respect and courtesy. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you are higher or lower than that person, that attitude of honor and courtesy. And I pick up the mic, Sam, God bless you. Everybody, let's celebrate the hand of God upon Sam. Sam, thank you. You are a great blessing. I honor you. Thank you so much. You see that? Courtesy. At once, Sam will love me and Sam will reward me by increasing my self-worth and my honor in his mind. See, this is what makes some leaders, although they are silent, the reverence that people give to them is almost like, like human worship. There is something they are doing. They have transferred honor to their subordinates and they are receiving the harvest of that honor back. Are you learning something? Never you sub your subordinates to prove that you are mighty. You are a fool if you do that. Transfer honor to them. Some of them will be rebellious, but it's a law that cannot be broken. The honor will return to you a hundredfold. Is God speaking to us? The mentality of courtesy. Ladies, one act of courtesy can open your marital destiny. You have fasted for 40 days, but your attitude, no courtesy. You give a gentleman something, you cannot even give him with, 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 with courtesy. Help me with that handkerchief. Eh, take hello. What are you even saying again? Take. And whereas this guy has been looking from afar. 
Oh Lord, do I go or do I not go? And immediately he sees that nonsense. He plots the graph and says, no, this is not what God showed me. And he turns back. Are you anointed? Yes. Do you pray in tongues? Yes. But it has stopped the door of marriage. Am I speaking to us? Some of us, our attitude of being rude, rude to people, courtesy. I make it as a point of duty. I make it as a point of duty as much as possible. Even when I am rebuking people, they know that in that rebuke, I love them. I sent a text to the leaders, I think it was yesterday or today, appreciating all of them for handling the ministry activities and doing everything in my absence. I'm still going to tell them again during the, our leaders meeting because I love them. I honor the leaders in this ministry. I respect the grace of God upon their life and I, I thank God for the grace and the opportunity and the privilege of working with them. That is the reason why no matter what happens when you come outside, you must find some chairs. I rebuke the protocol most times when I come and see people standing. Why? Because of honor. I honor the fact that you left your house and came here. Are you seeing that you are not just coming to, to Koinonia because I'm anointed? There is an atmosphere that unconsciously honors you. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are churches you go and you are treated like a piece of rag. The only person who deserves to be honored is the man of God. And members say, I can't stay here. Is the man warded? Yes. Is he anointed? Yes. But he does not understand the organizational principles of sustaining success. Please learn it. Courtesy. Learn to be cautious. Learn to treat people with honor and respect. Greet people. Greet people. Don't say this person, when I was in SS3, was please leave all those things. Greet people. Oh, Benga, how are you? Um, Abiodu, how are you? When I came in, I saw Jake's. I gave him a nice hug. And I just come and say, I'm, no, 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 no. Say, I receive grace to honor men. Say, I receive grace to show courtesy. If somebody offends you, handle the situation in wisdom. Don't just hit things in a way that you scatter the opportunities of tomorrow. Because you are trying to respond to the pain of today. There are roommates who cannot talk to themselves again. Because of that mutual respect of honor. And you, when people honor you, reciprocate it back. You become foolish when you are only receiving and not giving. If Tosin looks at me now and says, Ah, says something that I like. I will find something to reciprocate. And so you become a friend of everybody. When people are suffering from complex, they run to you. Because you have an atmosphere that says you are welcome. You have an atmosphere. When I finish Koinonia here, I've been, I've been tired since morning. But I have to stand here to at least. The people are joining a line. That is already embarrassing for me. Because I know some of the people standing in that line. It's not like there are some helpless people. But they humble themselves and they stand. And to be able to do that, I give them a hug. I talk to them with courtesy. All our little children that come to hug me here, I honor them. That's why immediately after service, they come around. You, the little children sit near you. As they are sharing the grace, they are running away from you. Something about your life is driving them. That's how a business partner will look at you. And say you don't have the skill for business but there is an attitude there's something about you i want to do business with you there is a business of hundreds of millions that i want to do with you and you step into favor favor that you will never recover from there are doors of ministry that have been opened to me today that i know should never have been opened but because I honored my way to them. I treated people with courtesy. And I didn't know when I met them again. And they were the ones who advocated that I be blessed. Is God speaking to us. The last thing I want to talk about. Is the mentality of endurance. Endurance. Help us Holy Spirit. Just give me five minutes and we'll pray. Everybody say endurance. 
Say it, endurance. The Bible puts it this way. He that endures to the end. Everybody say endure to the end. Many people will never taste of the fruit of true success. Because we gas out. We do not have the staying power. Listen, listen, listen. That's why the ministry of prayer is inevitable if you want to finish strong. Endurance. Endurance. In your journey to greatness, you will endure. You will endure hardship. You will endure misunderstanding. You will endure misinterpretation. You will endure a lot. You will make sacrifices. You will endure hunger. But he that endures, let me tell you, when you see a blessed man, respect him. Don't ever see any man, either in the corporate world or in the ministry that is truly lifted and trivialize what God has done. Never want my crown until you see the scars on my hand. Every crown has a scar on the hand. Are you, are, you, are you getting this? I'm rounding up. I'm speaking to you. That illusion that greatness will just happen to you is a dream. Wake up. That illusion that somebody will become successful and then you enter his success just like that. I'm telling you it's a dream. Wake up. So while you are there running people down, realize that if you must be great, your own curriculum of endurance is waiting for you. No matter how you are, there are people today who misunderstand koinonia. There are people today who misinterpret what we are doing. We have been persecuted in our respect. Don't you think it's everybody that loves Joshua Selman? There are people when you call Joshua Selman, it's as if you call the Lord Jesus. There are people if you call Joshua Selman, it's as if you call the devil and the antichrist. All together is what builds dexterity for ministry. I remember when the protocol started responding to calls and the rest. I received a lot of backlashes from people. Are you trying to say you are too busy now? You cannot respond to us. Why should protocol be endurance? But right now, it has proven to be an excellent system. Endurance. Are you willing to endure? Many of us do not want to be talked bad about. Sorry for you as far as success is concerned. Let me tell you, it's a cross that every great man must carry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You want anointing, but you don't want the persecution that comes with it. You are dreaming. Oh, they will talk against you. They will say, how are we sure that anointing is genuine? How are we sure the miracles are real? How are we sure? This one that have not been around now for two weeks. <laughs> Somebody can say, I knew it. Maybe he went to collect power. <laughs> he went to collect power for the next level. Listen, listen. Never be under pressure to prove your innocence. There is a law. You can do nothing against the truth. But for the truth. Be comforted by the immutability of kingdom laws. And do not be under pressure to prove any point. If somebody meets somebody and says, Benga, I'm suspecting that he has been sleeping with prayer band ladies. Don't try me. Me. God knows. We, no, 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 no. You can do nothing against the truth. The truth was buried after three days. It resurrected. You can't hide truth for long. No, sir. No, sir. Keep your sacrifice. Endure. I'm giving you a mindset. Realize that success does not come on a platter of gold. The favor of God does not take away the need for endurance. You will endure hardship. Are you getting what I'm saying? You will endure hardship. To be prosperous financially, you will make sacrifices. You will make mistakes. You will learn a lot. To grow in ministry, you will have to learn a lot of lessons through pain, sweat, and blood. I know my message is not attractive, but this is what will make you uncommon. Endurance. Endurance. Endure hardship. As a faithful soldier of Christ, you went to win souls, nothing happened. 
You went for that meeting. You thought the power of God would move. Nothing happened. And you seem to live in shame. Don't worry. Keep fasting. Keep praying. I know you went. And it looked like they dread you. You went to sing. And you lost your key. You lost your voice. You embarrassed. Don't worry. Let them keep laughing. Don't be under pressure to prove anything. And say, no. It's, I can sing. Oh, what happened that day is I had kata. Forget about all those explanations. Kata or no kata. Continue. A day will come. You will be noted for persistence. And your critics will become the advocates of your lifting. When you endure. If you give up. You make the prophecy of your critics true. You make it a self-fulfilling prophecy. God is speaking to someone. We're rounding up. That all you need is to keep doing what you are doing. I know they are talking about you at home. Your prayer life has brought a lot of persecution. But endure. Keep praying. Sister, they've told you you will marry the Holy Spirit. No problem. Keep praying. They've called you Mother Mary. And now you are ashamed. You cannot even hold your Bible again. Endure. Listen, it's an irrefutable law of greatness. An irrefutable law. I thank God today for the sacrifices of endurance. I thank God for the times when I did not give up in my life. Today, it has translated to the salvation of millions. The transformation of lives seated here right now listening to me are people who need to endure i know you have been taught that if it is of god it must come cheap and easy no sir there is a system in the kingdom where men pass through the cross to get the crown this is a very deep teaching you must endure we are going to pray oh i will endure no matter what it will take I will endure. As you are sitting down right now, there may not be one naira in your pocket, but endure. Keep tightening. Some of you, aside from boss, you may trek home. Endure. Some of you, you go and receive, as old as you are, you still receive all kinds of beating from your elderly ones. Endure. And you see the hand of God upon your life. Endure. Who is God speaking to? Some of you are spilling over and it looks bad. But God is speaking to you tonight. Endure. Don't worry. It looks like one year is a long time. Two years is a long time. But don't worry. Like the twinkling of an eye, you will come out. But as you are coming out, you will not just come out a graduate. What would take your colleagues 10 years you have learned? So one giant leap in destiny you will cover up. But for now, endure. Endure endure. You don't have suit to wear. Don't be under pressure to do anything. Endure. Is God speaking to us? I choose to endure. This is how this ministry came. To see what God is doing today and to see where he brought us and to see where he's taking us. Endurance. Endure the mockery. Endure the shame. Never be under pressure to prove yourself. At every given point in your life, those who love you outweigh those who hate you. Don't because of the five or six people that hate you, you throw away the honor of millions of people in your life. If 30 people hate Sam, 2 million people love him. Respect their love and don't turn to 10 or 16 people and try to be under the pressure of defending yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? At every point in your life, those who are for you are greater than those who are against you. Rise up on your feet. As a man thinketh, your mental composition endure. You are in that department, it looks like you will die. It will not kill you. You are not the first to graduate from there. Endure hardship. Endure the mockery. You will be misunderstood. You are being nice to brothers. Sometimes you cook for them. They've called you desperate. Endure. Don't worry. A day will come. His honor will come upon your life. Lift your voice and thank the Lord for the word tonight. Pray.
the mental composition that makes you victorious the mental composition i give you a guarantee with the integrity of god backed up it will make you exceptional it will make you notable are you praying koinonia hallelujah i like you to lift up your voice and say lord i bring my mindset under the lordship of christ that every mentality in me that is making me think in a way that is inconsistent with the patterns of greatness I take authority over it. Lift your voice and pray. Koinonia, are you praying tonight? fresh. I pull down strongholds. I cast down imaginations. Guard your heart with all diligence. It is the key to your prosperity. Your mindset. Is the key to the increase in the anointing. Is the key to the Holy Spirit doing mighty things in your life. The key to you being a champion. The key to you breaking cultural barriers. The key to you being mighty. I don't care where you are now. I don't care what is wrong now. Endure. Be strong. Be strong. Hold on. Be strong. hallelujah Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 the name of the mindset I want you to have is called the mind of Christ the resultant effect of this transformation is called the mind of Christ then you become an envoy then you master life then you become a champion men honor you as if you charm them everywhere you go you are a magnet and people are saying what i'm giving you the mental requirements of an exceptional life please give us philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Mm. oh lord i pray that your people will listen permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus the word let there is permit allow it god is saying change i want to make you mighty you came from kogi state i know there is witchcraft but can you adjust your mind and see a champion that i will make out of you i know you are weak the whole family stays in one room but can you make that shift in your mind let this mind be in you let this mind be in you koinonia let this mind be in you upgrade your mindset don't let culture cheat you don't let your past cheat you hallelujah i like you to lift your voice and say lord i reject inferiority and low self-esteem you have made me great i'm not cheap i'm not a local champion I stop trying to do things. Pray, pray, pray. I stop trying to do things to prove a point. I stop trying to borrow money to look rich. I stop trying to tell lies to look like I'm making progress. I reject a life of falsehood. I move gradually. Gradually level by level pray i reject low self-esteem i am fearfully and wonderfully made no culture no cgpa no financial level no challenge will ever make me feel bad job or lack of job admission or lack of admission marriage or lack of marriage let it never get to you and make you feel inferior pray satan the lord rebuke you i refuse to feel inferior 
the favor of the Lord the favor of the Lord a champion on my way to happen Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this prayer point, I'd like you to pray it with all your heart. Say, Lord, my mouth has brought too much trouble in my life. It will not continue like this. I set a guard over my mouth. I have gossiped my way to trouble. I have lied my way to trouble. I have, I have joined the heads of people and friends. I've done a lot of things that have destroyed people. Go ahead and pray. I offer my mouth, my tongue, my lips. From today, it becomes an object of blessing. An instrument of lifting. Pray. I add character and a healthy mindset to my anointing. I speak aright. I speak only when I need to. Set a watch, oh God, over my lips. Set a watch, oh God, over my lips. Set a watch, oh God, over my lips. May I not destroy my friends with my words. May I not destroy my destiny helpers. May I not drive away my instruments of breakthrough may i not scatter my family with my words may i not destroy ministries may i not destroy my academics may i not destroy my anointing with bad words uncultured words hallelujah hallelujah number three we are going to pray Say, Lord, from today, I have respect and honor for all men, regardless of who they are, regardless of who their parents are. Grant me grace to demonstrate genuine respect and honor for people, those higher than me, my contemporaries, and even those lower than me. Lift your voice and cry to God. I repent of my rude nature. I repent of my pride and arrogance. Lord, I receive grace. May courtesy open doors of access to me. May honor open doors of access to me. Are you praying? Put a guard, oh God, on my lips. I want to be exceptional. I want to be exceptional. I want to shorten the journey to my destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, hold hands around. We are going to pray. Because you will need grace to fulfill this sign. You are going to pray and say, Lord, over what you have called me to do, I will endure over the preparation i'm in the school of the spirit it does not yet appear but i will endure lord men are mocking me but i will endure my finances are mocking me my lack of marriage my lack of childbirth is mocking me but i will endure lift your voice and pray a supply of grace a supply of grace i refuse to be under pressure Pray, pray, grace, grace, grace to continue in the midst of harsh conditions, grace to continue in the midst of persecution, grace to continue. That ministry must not die, that anointing must not die. 
that business must not die that job seeking must not end I endure to the end I endure to the end there's no food now but I endure I don't have friends now but I endure hallelujah hallelujah please i want to encourage everybody in preparation for miracle service on friday listen to this message again make sure you get it please just listen to these instructions listen to this message again Get all the messages I've preached on greatness and success and listen to it. I want this rain to fall on everybody. Listen to it. The rain must fall. Because if the clouds be full. See, let me tell you. Before the end of this year, there will be an emergence of kingdom millionaires right here. Yes, it will happen. It's not just by claiming this is the pathway. I'm showing you how. Before the end of this year, men will step into levels of anointing many of you will you, you will be so exceptionally to scare you submit yourself to the dealings submit yourself to the prunings the teachings may be very hard on you but don't take it personal take it as god building you to be a champion the person who loves you is the one who will not leave you the way you are a friend will pat you the way you are you see that but the one who wants to change you will sharpen you till you become mighty Listen, there are people here, we're all inside now, who are yet to give their lives to Jesus Christ. If you are not born again or you are backsliding on God, is a mentality, is a sign that you do not yet see that He is the only true God and should be the only factor in your life. I'm giving you an opportunity right now. There are people here, I believe, who need to give their lives to Jesus for the first time and others need to rededicate their lives and say, Lord, I'm returning back home. The mindset I've been having that drives your presence away from me. I cannot be living my life the way I want. Make your way to the front right now. One minute for this, please. Make your way to the front. If there are people like that, no matter where you are, don't sit down waiting for the first person. If there are people right now, wherever you are, God bless you. God bless you. Appreciate them. They are coming. Don't be ashamed. They can come and stand here. God bless you. I know he's not the only one. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you and saying, make your way out. Make sure you find your way right now. Come to Jesus. Make your way right now. Make your way right now. Make your way right now. Commit your heart to the Lord. No playing games with destiny. Make your way. Hallelujah. Those of you standing, thank you for coming out. You must mean business with Jesus. Lift your right hand and say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. And I make up my mind that from today, I will walk with you. I receive the grace. I receive eternal life into my spirit. From today, I'm a new creation. Jesus is Lord of my life. I denounce sin and Satan and the way of the flesh in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for coming out. May the Lord bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget 
to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye